Emperor. Let's buckle up. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Monday, folks. It is February the 26th, and I think I might sneeze, but I'm not exactly sure. So stay tuned for that. I hope you're having a good one. I hope you, like I, am rocking your brand new cat shirt. I don't know if it's coming through crispy, uh, clearly, but you can see a little bit of the vibe. You can see the cat vibe. So it's time to find out if we found ourselves a brand new lucky shirt to be degenerate in the market with. Um, so throw on your lucky paraphernalia. Maybe, just maybe, it will work itself out. Also, shout out to my producer for getting me this shirt. So that's also a nice benefit. But folks, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you spent a lot of time at your local Texas roadhouse, supported the economy, stimulated your local neighborhood, and I hope you're rested, relaxed, recharged for another fun-filled week in the world's largest casino. I'm excited. And that old market's going to go dingity ding 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 in about an hour. We're starting a little bit early because I have some extra things to talk about with all of you. And so we're going to get some important stuff out of the way. And then we're just going to be laser focused, laser focused on doing some degenerate trading. So I'm excited for it. If you're not excited, maybe go take a quick nap and then come back. I don't know what you need to do, but get your head right. Uh, it's going to be a fun day. Not only do we have a fun day in the market, but also, oh, at 1 p.m., 1 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to be doing an interview in person on Yahoo Finance. We're going to be talking about crypto. It's going to be kind of like a fun town hall-esque discussion. 1 p.m. today, Yahoo. So make sure you're tuning into their channel over there to check that one out. Just want to throw that out there before I forget. So the name of the game today is review some of the craziness that happened over the weekend. The TLDR on that is the fact that Trump absolutely embarrassed Nikki Haley in the South Carolina vote. So we're going to be going over that. And basically at this point, Nikki Haley's done. I'm surprised she hasn't already announced her resignation. Uh, the Koch brothers already pulling the money from her. I mean, when you don't win your own state, that like that's bad. Yeah, like that's that's really, really bad. Um, so we're going to be going over what that does mean, what that doesn't mean. So a little bit of political stuff. I want to talk about earnings. I want to talk about seasonality. I want to talk about the Goonie Discord. I want to talk about a continuation of what's going on in China. More seasonality stuff. We got some interesting news clips. Uh, you guys sent in a bunch of reacts. We have a fully packed show today. Uh, a dramatically packed show today. So hence why we're starting early because I just need to fit all this in. And then by the time that market does go dingity ding ding ding, um, I spent a lot of time this weekend coding up some bot stuff, coding up some algos, and I'm hoping they rip. And I'm obviously giving myself an extra edge by wearing my new lucky shirt. Um, so by the time that market goes for that first half hour, if if the code is working as expected, it should be firing very, very dramatically. So let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Um, but anyway, I appreciate you guys tuning in a little bit early. If you haven't already, don't forget to destroy that like button. Don't forget to destroy the subscribe button. Helps me out with the algorithm gods above that run my entire life effectively. Well, it's the algorithm gods on social media, and then it's the market gods in terms of my bank account. So I need to appease both sets of gods today. Clean cut. Thank you. So I made the big decision to have the barber do like the single razor beard shape, life-changing. For any of the men or women in here who need their beard cleaned up, let your barber do it one of these times. You know, like just spend the extra whatever, 10, 15, 20 dollars. They give you the cool towel. It's an experience. You're not just paying to look all crisp, but you're paying for a very relaxing experience. And if you're like me, you're going to get some Eastern European dude who has the craziest stories, most of which I fear are actually real. And I fear it because they seem very, very illegal. But I had this Eastern European barber and he is, he's a cool dude. He's a cool dude. I enjoy him every single time. His stories are hilarious. And it always gets me rolling. Always gets me rolling. Story time. No, I don't think I can necessarily narc on this guy because I like trust him with the health of my hair. Um, but just, I'm telling you guys, the secret to life is finding yourself a barber. 
from Eastern Europe. That is the craziest stories ever, and it will be worth it. It is 100% worth it. Your money back guarantee. Now, with all that being said, let's 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 dive into the market. You know, let's get a little crazy with it. Warm up your cup of coffee. Get another one brewing in the background because we have an exciting morning, and then hopefully a very very profitable trading day. Let's see what in the world is going on. Stock futures are a little changed after record setting week. So for those of you who might have been sleeping under a rock, to conclude last week, the S&P 500, the index to rule them all hit a new all-time high of 510.13, the SPY. The ETF tracking the S&P 500 hit the new high, and then the actual S&P 500 hit a new high 5,111.06. Um, so to close out the week, to really get into the final push of February, a new all-time high was locked in in the overall market. And then similar thing in the tech-facing sphere where we got the Qs hit 440.59. Um, this morning, things are looking a little bit weak. Uh, the, the overnight session was a bit rough, and this is because of what's going down in China, so I'll be covering that. But really, over the past 45 minutes, we're seeing some bulls step in. I guess the Americans, the people were sleeping when there was a bit of weakness. And by the time we woke up, got some coffee, brushed our teeth, cleaned out our eyes, they decided, oh, this is that broken slot machine that just goes higher and higher and higher. Because don't forget, stonks only go up, apparently. Um, so by the time people got up and they realized what's up, they they started to buy. So a uh, little bit of weakness, but starting to go and go and go. Did I watch SNL? I didn't watch the whole thing, but I saw a bunch of clips with Shane Gillis, and he's so funny. He, he's honestly a top-tier comedian. Top-tier comedian right now in real time. I'd put him in the top five. Uh, his, his stuff absolutely smack so i didn't watch the whole thing honestly i haven't watched a whole episode of snl in quite a while but i end up watching a like a lot of like the best clips that end up on other forms of social media so i saw his opening monologue i saw his like prep up jokes like the i don't know the jokes to get everyone to try to watch the show uh so i saw those i saw the opening monologue i saw some of the skits and then the limu emu one i was rolling i was absolutely rolling uh, but anyway, we can watch some of those clips in a second. Let me just get everyone prepped up for the day. You know, I don't want anyone to feel like they're being slut. Or should we just watch it right now? Uh, or should we just watch it right now? Because that sounds like a lot more fun. I was, I think if I scroll on my social media, I should be able to find it. For those of you who haven't seen the Shane Gillis, I'll probably get DMCA'd if I had to guess. What was this one about? Uh, where is it? Where is it? It's, it's going to pop up. It has to pop up. What is this one? Chuck Liddell fell off McGregor's yacht. <laughs> oh chuck liddell i am not laughing at you without a doubt because you would murder me but he just completely oh chuck knowing him while he was down there he probably took out a couple of sharks or two good chuck Oh, that might have been more funny than finding the clip we were actually after. <laughs> all right. All right. We're already, you know, you guys always do this to me. I have this whole plan of like what the show is going to be, all the stuff that I want to go over. And then seconds in, someone says something that distracts me. Like you guys, it didn't even take you 10 minutes today to just like take this show and completely go off the rail guard to it. We, we got to we have to have a little bit of, I don't know, semblance of something being put together here. You guys, you do this. And I feel like you do it on purpose as well. Not cool. Not cool. Anyway, stock features, little change. Yeah, we just hit a new high. People are feeling pretty good. And it's being led by the AI bubble, which is definitely a bubble. But the thing with bubbles is it's very tough to pick when they pop. This bubble could double, triple in size, or today could be the last day. You really don't know. So is it a bubble? Of course it is. All these things are so greatly fundamentally overvalued right now. So it's going to be a fun ride to the upside. It's been a fun ride to the upside. And eventually it's going to pop and people are going to get seriously hurt, especially the people who don't have a trailing stop loss, who are being greedy and think it just has to keep going and going and going. Folks, we've lived through this together. Do not be that greedy. It is just simply not worth it. But anyway, we'll come back to that type of discussion and everything. I want to give you kind of a hot political update from over the weekend. 
What does Nikki Haley do now after losing to Trump in her home state of South Carolina? Key takeaways from Saturday's GOP primary. So South Carolina, Saturday, it was the death blow. The dagger to the heart of Nikki Haley, who was talking a, a tough game, talking a very, very tough game. And now she kind of realized what we already all knew from all of the polls, all of the stats, all of the anecdotal evidence that no one was going for her. And she actually lost her own home state. A wee bit embarrassing, if you ask me. Um, at this point, uh, I'm actually surprised at in real time that she hasn't already ended her campaign. It's just at this point, it, it's always been wasting money, but now she's just wasting more money. I want to congratulate Donald Trump on his victory. <laughs> and I want to thank the people of South Carolina for using the power of your voice. Quick pause. Shout out to Charleston. I haven't really been anywhere else in South Carolina, but I lived in Charleston for one entire summer. I had an internship there. And then since then, I've had the opportunity to visit for whatever, this, that, the other thing. Charleston's awesome. Just want to throw that out there. If you represent South Carolina in chat, especially if you represent Charleston, I like what you've done with the place. Great city. Today in South Carolina, we're getting around 40% of the vote. Not enough to win. Nikki Hillary. <laughs> that, that's, about what, that's about what we got in New Hampshire, too. What I'm about Nevada? Count. I know 40% is not 50%. Math check. But I also Does that check out? Is 40, 40 not 50? Is not some tiny group. It's just kind of odd. It's kind of like, does anyone, it's just like kind of cringy. There, there are huge numbers of voters in our Republican primaries who are saying they, they like want an awkward. alternative. Girl, Matt. I said earlier this week that no matter what happens in South Carolina, I would continue to run for president. Oh, it's just a waste of time. It's a waste of money. Like, why? I would continue to run for president. But, like, what about if you don't? I'm not giving up this fight when a majority of Americans disapprove of both Donald Trump and Joe Biden. That's true. I don't think they would approve of you much more. South Carolina has spoken. We're the fourth state to do so. In the next 10 days, another 21 states and territories will speak. They have the right. Dude, she's going to gonna get swept. Choice. If you can't win your own home state, like, it's Soviet truly a waste of money, resources, and time. Candidate. And I have a duty to give them that choice. Yeah. I, she, she lost. She hasn't suspended her campaign. She's saying that she's not going to suspend her campaign. And I don't know, but it's, it's very much going downhill for her. Billionaire backed Coke network halts Nikki Haley campaign funding after South Carolina loss. Americans for prosperity action. The network be backed by the billionaire. Charles Coke is pausing its financial support of GOP presidential candidate, Nikki Haley's campaign. Haley lost her home state primary. Oof in South Carolina on Saturday and also lost financial support from billionaire Reed Hoffman in January. One billionaire gone. You lose your home state. Another billionaire gone. Those are the three strikes and you're generally out. And just, I guess, the umpire as she's swinging hasn't told her she needs to go back to the dugout at this point because that's not good. Despite these setbacks, Halo's campaign affirmed her promise to stay in the race through Super Tuesday on March 5th. So she ends the campaign on March 6th? Or do you, do you think she ends her campaign the night of March 5th or the morning of March 6th at that point? Because we're already arguably a month or two be like beyond when she should have ended it. It's just the math is against her. Like whatever, if you like her, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but like 
no poll in the world is saying she even has a slight chance. Like not don't it would have to be the largest error in polling ever to think that she has some sort of chance here. I mean, I guess something crazy could happen, but no, the math is stacked against her. Just people don't like her. Coke Network to stop funding Haley and blow to her 2024 bid. Decision comes after big loss in South Carolina primary. Group sent $32 million to boost Haley campaign against Trump. Now, hear me out. They could have spent $31 million, and then they could have paid me a consulting fee of a million dollars, and I would have been like, stop giving her money. It's a waste of money. In fact, no, no, no. Because at that point, they're they're not dumb guys. They're they're in it for a business deal. What I would have done is I would have taken a million dollar fee, and when they spent twenty four million on her, a million on me, they're only in the whole twenty five. I could have saved them seven million dollars. I mean, like, hey, don't do it. I'll explain what these polls mean to you. I would have saved them seven million. Your boy would have had a million. And maybe she would have ended her career, her, I guess, career as a presidential hopeful, or I don't even know what she's necessarily doing right now, um, would have ended it a little bit early. So that was a waste of money. $32 million. It could have been here. It would have been more exciting to see that in like one degenerate bet in the options market than, I guess, this funding. It's just a bit silly. Nikki Haley comes in at 39.5% uh, on, on the docket. It's not enough, but she's still going. Why is she continuing on through Super Tuesday? What good, is the, good question. What's the underlying reason? So what analysts will look at when they look at a Nikki Haley campaign is her setting herself up for the future. She's a, a decade younger, or generation young, younger than former President Donald Trump. She could set herself up for 2028 nicely. At the same time, Maybe. she is still bringing in really mega to donors away. to fund her so she can use this war chest in the future now we do know the Koch brothers political action committee has put out a statement over the weekend um first reported by political saying they are going to ratchet back that funding to her because they don't see a path forward for mm -hmm. her and they're going to focus on some senate and congressional districts that they think they can win in some of those races but she's making a point within the republican party and i think it's an important point if you look at the fox voter analysis six in 10 Haley voters had to say this. They would not support Trump in the general election. So, well, yes, wow. Trump dominated. Six in 10. He only still got 60% of the That's kind of surprising. And he's running as an incumbent. So I think what this race also showed is not just the path that Trump is going to be the nominee, but also how much harder the climb is going to be for the former president in a general election. Mm. How much harder are things for Nikki Haley if she doesn't have the backing of the Koch brothers. I understand the idea of what you're saying is, is that it's, it's it's about the look forward. It's not necessarily about the presidential election, have to but does sell that some of her Boeing stock to, to stick around until Super Tuesday? Keep things well, I, running I think it complicates March. her efforts in terms of, I don't think till Super Tuesday, but potentially middle to the end of March. And mm. likely you could see Trump bring in the number of delegates he's going to need to pass the threshold by the middle to the end of March. And then we'd be full throttle on the longest general election campaign in American history. Hell yeah, brother. In April. Um, but I think it's an important symbolic moment for Nikki Haley because what really has been surrounding her for weeks and months is the fact that she's able to bring in these top-notch, highly lucrative, conservative capital. And what happens now when you start to hear murmurs that people are going to start to wind down because they just don't see the path forward, even though they like her as a candidate. It might like her, just not enough people like her. I guess before we move on to, well, hang on, let's get into this. And then I have an important question for all of you. Just another update on the conservative side of things, just because that's what's happening. Obviously, the Democratic side a little bit quieter right now because they are the incumbent. But anyway, RNC chair Ronna McDaniel announces her resignation. This is the exact person that, if you guys remember the Miami GOP debate, Vivek went up and like was roasting everyone. Well, Ronnie here was one of the people that he was absolutely roasting. Some of my proudest accomplishments, including firing Nancy Pelosi, winning the popular vote in 2022, creating an EID, building the committee's first small donor grassroots donor program, strengthening our state parties through the growing Republican organizations to win program, expanding the party through minority outreach at our community centers, and launching Bank Your Vote to get Republicans to commit to voting early. Just a giant PR spin of basically the shout outs from her resume. Maybe she's already trying to get another job. 
I've decided to step aside at our spring training on March 8th in Houston to allow our nominee to select a chair for their choosing. The RNC has historically undergone change once we have a nominee and has always been my intention to honor that tradition. Uh, no, she, she was ran out. I, I don't think this was necessarily by her own decision her own desire uh she was she was kind of run out of it but anyway the final thing i want to do in terms of the weekend political update for all of you is at this point it be, at least mathematically to me it seems as if the gop nominee is going to be trump so my first question to all of you is do you agree with that assessment whether you like them or not i'm just saying from your the people you speak with, the news you take in, obviously I might have blinders on that I don't even realize, but it does appear to me as if the GO nominee, GOP nominee is clearly going to be Trump. Do you agree with that? I'm not saying he's going to win or anything. I'm saying, do you think he is going to be 100% unless he's uh, unalive? Okay. 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 So it seems like that makes a bit of sense. You guys are mopping up my spill. Second question. Do you believe that Biden will be the nominee for the Democrats? Do you believe, basically what I'm asking is if if we're all in consensus that it's going to be Trump, do you think that the options are actually going to be Biden and Trump? Do you think it's going to be those two? Or do you think it's going to switch out? No. I think you guys are a little bit overly confident. Okay, who do you think it's going to be then? Yes, but he will he will not step aside. Uh, he'll step down by April. Who do you think is going to be then? If if it's not Biden, because I don't know, I think you guys might be a little bit. You think it's going to be Gavin Newsom? I mean, that would be. I mean. It seems like the two major ones you guys are going with is Gavin Newsom and Michelle Obama. Newsom? I mean, that's kind of silly though, right? I get that he's younger. I get that he's a bit more well-spoken, but he's also the guy who's leading the country that's had the biggest downfall in the last decade. If you ranked every single individual state, California is the one that's getting absolutely crushed. So is that really a strategic play to pick the guy who can't run a state to let him run the country. Um, I would hope that it's someone else. Can we force John Stewart to run on the Dem ticket? I'd be happy with John Stewart. At least he's like mentally there. He's very sharp. He's hilarious. I actually enjoy that he's going to be doing a weekly show of an update in politics. I think it'll be, uh, I think it's actually going to gain massive, massive popularity beyond what most people are even imagining for. I'm excited for that show. Um, I think it'd be really, really cool. It will not be Newsom. It'll take more than a year to get him clean enough to try for a run. Dwayne Johnson for president. What if we just had The Rock and John Cena as president and vice president? And then every so often they just do a cage match with other world leaders. Honestly, I'd vote for that. Just, just at this point, I kind of vote for entertainment value anyway. And that would just be more entertainment. It's just, I want John Cena, The Rock, president, vice president. And we just, we let him rip. We just see what happens. Could, could work. Could work. Not the craziest idea. Uh, we could always write in the wrong. I guess we could. All right. So I just wanted to ask you that. Oh, I guess I should. No, I'm going to ask. Mm, mm. All right. I'll ask you now. I'll ask you now. Start a poll. I am starting a poll right now. Mark it at open. I am asking you for the very first minute of the day. From 930 to 931, which way does the market go? I am asking you this because my financial health is on the line. So be right. You're not allowed to, anyone who votes wrong is going to be permanently banned from chat. So this is not only is my financial health on the line, your life within this digital kingdom of the MK show is all on the line. So 
Uh, vote, vote, vote. I just put up that poll and then I'll come back and ask you Rumble folks when we're a little bit closer. But on to some, oh, one final thing. Actually, speaking of Biden, this is why I wanted to ask you first was to go over this. A new Gallup poll just came out. Biden's job approval edges down to 38%. So his approval rating down, 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 down. Biden's job performance has edged down three percentage points to 38%, just one point shy of his all-time low and well below the 50% threshold that has typically led to re-election for incumbents. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So first question, President Biden's job as president, 59% disapprove, 38% approve. The situation in Ukraine, 53% disapprove, 40% approve. The economy, 61% disapprove, 38, 36% approve. The, the 36 people, 36% of people who were polled and said they approved of the economy, you got to give me the number of your drug dealer because you are on some shit that is out of this stratosphere. One in three people polled said the economy is good. That's, you got to be on something like, so I don't, it has to be something made in a lab that we're not even allowed to discuss. No one knows the name of like it, it must be a new designer drug. That's all the fat at cool underground raves because I'm missing out on that. Foreign affairs, 33% approved, 62% disapproved. The situation in Middle East between the Israelis and Palestinians, 62% disapproved, 30% approved. And then immigration, two in three. 67% disapproved, 28% approved. That is bad. Honestly, that's the most damning one, not only because of the extreme nature. If two out of three people are disapproving on immigration, that means you have a, a clearly, like mathematically, it has to be a big subset of the Democrats, his voters, that do not like what he's doing with the southern border. So the whole southern border of like, do you agree, do you not disagree? And a lot of the times in media, mainstream media, it's painted as like right versus left. This is mathematically eking into the territory where Democrats, left-leaning people are even starting to say, what you doing, brother? What you do? Commercial from me? Hi, my name is Matt. Have you ever had a blue mug before? Well, today is your lucky day. This stream is brought, brought to you by blue, blue Mugs, where all of your mugs could be blue and you could have your coffee in it. For four low payments of $48, you yourself could have a blue mug. Are you tired of other colored mugs? Well, boy, oh boy, you should check this out. Lim limited limited supply only get 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 your blue mugs now from bluemugsnow.com Th thanks blue mugs hello okay not what i meant you made me do the ad early what the fuck i thought you guys were on my side <laughs> all right it's a biden moment <laughs> all right See, this is serious stuff. This is a serious show. Stop, stop acting around. Matt has been to acting school. <laughs> um, guys, serious, stop messing around. We are a serious community. We are a serious community full of serious people. Let's stop going off the rails today. All right. Early this morning, we heard from Domino's and Berkshire Hathaway. I do want to clarify, as you can see from what's on the screen, that there's still a decent amount of earnings this week. The issue is, is that earnings season is basically done. None of these are like mega, mega market cap companies. So not necessarily uh, swaying the entire market. Obviously, within certain subsectors, you might care about it. After the market closes today, Unity, Zoom, Workday, tomorrow, Norwegian, AutoZone, Lowe's. We also have Devin Kava later on this week. If you want to check out Advanced Auto Parts, TJ Maxx, C3 AI, that might be an interesting one. Salesforce, Snowflake, uh, AMC. We could all listen to Adam Aaron continue to lie like the piece of shit that he is. Thursday, Celsius, Best Buy. So if you want to check it out, Dell is in there. But technically, technically, her earnings season is still going on. Uh, but all the exciting ones are basically done. So anyway, if you want to check this out, screenshot it, do whatever you want with it, but check it out. Let's get into some of the ones that we actually got this morning. Novo Nordisk. 
and Eli Lilly rival source 32% after promising weightless drug results. All right, so shares of Denmark's Zeeland Pharma shot up 32%. What's going on? Everyone wants a magic pill that makes them skinny. And right now with the massive, massive popularity of Ozempic, every other pharma bro and their mom is trying to make the newest, bestest weight loss pill. And I know we don't really talk about pharmacy stuff here that often because I don't like pharmaceutical plays. I don't like biotech plays. I just, that's not what I'm personally interested in. Uh, it is a not only a fad within the stock market, but it's crazy to see the fad worldwide, really. Like here in New York City, I think everyone's on Ozempic. What's Ozempic? It's a pill you take and it just really, really curbs your appetite. And I guess everyone's on it. All the cool kids are on Ozempic. I myself am not. I'm on what they refer to as a stair stepper, which I did 141 flights this morning in about 26, 27 minutes. So that's my Ozempic. But I guess for people who just don't want to battle their inner demons every single morning, uh, they just pop a pill instead. And yeah, massively popular on a cultural, societal standpoint, but also within the market, ripping, ripping, ripping. So for any of those of you who do like to trade or invest in pharmaceutical plays, I'm not doing it. It's not my cup of tea. But for those of you who like it, I just wanted to shout that out. And then the other one that might have caught your mind this morning was Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire set to close in on one trillion valuation after results warren buffett's berkshire hathaway post record cash pile and it's not just our boy warren it's actually this is the highest corporate cash holdings we've ever seen many many companies are stockpiling which maybe is a little bit of an ominous sign of like what do they know that we don't that they're not spending their money they're just choosing to hold it hold it hold it even in the face of inflation uh so something to consider but yeah no berkshire one trilly and dude, Warren, Warren's going. What's your takeaway uh, other than valuations are high um, from these numbers that we've gotten? Well, obviously really intriguing that that, that cash pile is so big now, mm. but it's more about kind of the some of the exploring um, deals that they have been looking at and, and kind of have shied Keeps away up from. on so Occidental Petroleum. There's still kind of a lot going on. You know, we've had subdued deal activity around the world, but there have been, you know, deals go through and, and, and indeed Berkshire has still been spending uh, money in certain areas. But of course, it does speak to not just elevated valuations in, in the equity market, but in, in uh, some of the other markets, you know, there are still uh, number of areas in private markets that are, that are particularly testing um, so I think it, it, it tells us a Not few in things China. Really, but, but one is that um, there was a very notable comment about um, opportunities outside of the US being essentially zero um, really not finding much opportunity uh, beyond the borders of the US um, Japan of course has been one of the big focuses for for, for, for Berkshire and, and that's been an interesting Japan market, hit a new uh, all-time high now that, that they've been stopped being so there, restrictive and hawkish the with their monetary policy capital flowing into Japan now has become really a huge story and of course uh, the Nikkei taking out the the historical levels last week shows you just how much of a change in sentiment there have been to to to, to Japanese businesses in recent times and, and Berkshire is obviously one huge component of that they see and continue to see some really interesting ideas there so I think Japan still stands out as a key market for them there yeah and in Japan as well as places like Australia it's interesting we have seen deal activity picking up a little bit what does it tell you about I guess broader risk appetite right now we have haven't we Heidi we've seen some deals kind of coming through in the early part of this year I mean we're only kind of you know just almost getting into March so just a couple of months it is still early but but there have been some pretty notable transactions and especially if you if you look here you know some of the what a uh, guy. Japanese what a fashion icon into Australia what a sex uh, symbol Renesos, that that deal um, and indeed with There's some so of these businesses that, that Berkshire's je ne sais in, in quoi, Japan, these trading houses if you will that's an eight billion for all my French natives and, and, and you know they're there for a far longer term uh, turnaround um, oh, story look there. At and of course a lot a of the reasons beacon. why they're there is because of some of these long-term changes Changes in shareholder That's attitude. the guy who lives at Rip. You know, you changes know? that don't take a few months, that take many years to come through. We're starting to see the early signs of that in Korea. Uh, whether that becomes uh, another market for them in the future on those kind of terms, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, clearly some deals are coming back now and you're starting to see some opportunity there for them. All right. So rich guy, really crushing it. Someone just said that Lord Rothschild has died? As in, like, 
the current patriarch of the Rothschilds. Is that breaking news? Or am I missing it? Did it just happen? Did it just get reported? I'm surprised it's not on CNBC when the leader of the Illuminati bites the bullet. You'd think that that would get on the business news. Oh, I wonder if I'm going to get invited to the super secret Illuminati meeting today. Rothschild. Is it Roth or Roths? It's Roths. Lord Jacob Rothschild. The 18th. Dies at age 87. Financier. Lord Jacob Rothschild. The 18th. Is dying at the age of 87. In a statement to the news agency PA on Monday, Rothschild family said, Al Fajr, Yaqib, was a towering presence in many lives, and that he would be buried in accordance with a Jewish custom in a small ceremony. Um, well, I guess Illuminati is going to have to have their, not just an election in the U.S. market this year, but an election in the... Uh, Illuminati world as well. So that's, that's interesting. This, this guy doesn't necessarily have like the vibe of a person that we should trust. My name is Jacob Rothschild. My family's worth $500 trillion. We own nearly every central bank in the world. We finance both sides of every war since Napoleon. We own your nose, the media, your oil, and your government. You have probably never heard of me. Oh, Yaqib. All right. Well, that's a little bit sketch. Wait, the world's elite are attending a lavish party and I wasn't invited? And they just murked Rothschild? Brother? This is really, really sketchy. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Fink, Morgan Stanley. Hold on. Blackstone Chairman Steven Schwarzman and also Disney CEO Bob Iger and the Bank of America Chairman oh, and the Rothschild family just so happened to show up. Can't forget the Adobe CEO either, right? All for Reliance Chairman Mukesh Ambani's son's wedding. Huh, who is the Ambani family? Well, let me show you. Mukesh Ambani just so happens to be the richest man in India worth $113 billion and also the CEO of Reliance Industries. Reliance. Hey, isn't that that group that helped Israel create that new Pegasus system? A system that just so happens to supposedly be able to track and sell specific millionaire and billionaire data. Hey, wait a minute. That system just so happens to be on the red alert list for the United States. Something that is specifically known for cyber attacks worldwide. A system that also might or might not be capable of providing a sense of blackmail for certain politicians worldwide as well. Not officially laying claim to anything being true, but let's get further into the Ambani family. Oh wait, the Ambani family, who just so happened to build the world's largest zoo, in quotations, with it being fucking 280 fucking acres of a project. Well, let's get into his daughter, because this is Mukesh Ambani's daughter. He just so happens to be a CEO of Tyra Beauty, Hamleys, Asio, Cover Story, Fresh Pick, Nat Meds, gotta love that one. Oh, and she just so happens to own 7-Eleven, which just so happens to be the number one supposed convenience store worldwide. But enough of our she daughter, as you can see, and he has dreams specifically that Ambani family has dreams of replacing China as the world's factory. And the country is attracting a growing share of smartphone production as well, but its structural weaknesses such as poverty are an obstacle. Let's talk about why the specific billionaires just so happen to be at this wedding. South Asian giant, which dreams of competing with China and global value chain, has successfully drawn leading electronics brands in recent years. Notably and ironically, the only iPhone that just so happens to blow up in your fucking pocket. And you can't forget about Google's new Pixel 8 and Samsung's Galaxy S24 are all manufactured in India as well. With even Elon Musk considering setting up an electric vehicle factory in the country as well. As you can see, in 2022, Apple shifted up a gear and began manufacturing its latest models there, first with the iPhone 14 and then with the iPhone 15. Now between 12% and fucking 14% of iPhones are sold worldwide or made in India. With supposedly by the end of 2024, a quarter of all Apple smartphones are expected to come out of Indian factories. So, okay, cool. We know where Tim Cook and Elon Musk intentions lie. But let's get into other individuals who just so happen to be at the specific wedding as well. Blackstone CEO Steven Swarzman supposedly collected $896.7 million last year. And when accounting for the dividends, both men collect more than the CEOs of the biggest Wall Street banks where compensation packages for top brass typically tally in the tens of millions. Oh wait, Blackstone Group is another large and well-known private equity firm that was known for being criticized for its role in the 2008 financial crisis. And how ironic for that presidency to be under Obama. If anybody at this point can confidently say that Obama was a good president, you have something wrong with you. 
You are literally the epitome of the problem. You probably still support Biden. But it was also known for its involvement in the creation of the controversial private equity bomb. Did you know at the end of 1994, BlackRock was managing $53 billion in 1994. Swordsman and Fink had an internal dispute over methods of compensation and equity. Fink wanted to share equity with new hires to lure talent from banks, unlike Swordsman, who did not want to go further, lower Blackstone stake. And they agreed to part ways, and Swordsman supposedly sold BlackRock to Larry Fink. Oh, and you can't forget, in January 2020, the PNC Financial Services sold its stake in BlackRock for $14.4 billion. In March 2020, the Federal Reserve chose BlackRock to manage two corporate bond buying programs in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The $500 billion that might or might not have gone missing in the PMCCF and the SMCCF, as well as purchased by the Federal Reserve and commercial mortgage-backed securities that were guaranteed by the Government National Mortgage Association. And in August of 2020, BlackRock just so happened to receive approval from the China Securities Regulatory Commission to set up a mutual fund business in the country. This made BlackRock the first global asset manager to get consent from the Chinese government to start operations in the country. And BlackRock and Larry Fink just so happen to be under investigation right now for supposedly supplying the Chinese military with a lot of fucking data and a lot of fucking finances. I am not going to lay claim to anything officially being true, but you can Google it for yourself. Quite literally trillions of fucking dollars. Oh, and did you know on December 28th, 2022, it was announced that BlackRock and Vladimir Zelensky had coordinated a role for the company in the reconstruction of Ukraine. Oh, and you can't forget in August of 2023, right after the Maui wildfires, by the way, BlackRock signed an agreement with the New Zealand to establish a New Zealand $2 billion investment fund for solar wind, green hydrogen, battery storage, and EV charging projects as part of its goal of reaching 100% renewable energy by 2030. What 2030? You know, Saudi Arabia just so happened to announce not so long ago that their, the line project is supposed to be also done in 2030. Huh, really makes you think, right? But hold on. In June 2023, BlackRock just so happened to file an application with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission to launch a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund, okay, an ETF program. Later in November 2023, they filed another application for a spot Ethereum ETF program. The only independent currencies that could be used worldwide aside from the U.S. dollar. And if the applications just so happen to be approved, which they were, these two ETFs would be among the first spot cryptocurrency ETFs in the United States. Oh, wait, that just so happens to remind me that BlackRock not so long ago just declared that they made in five weeks $6.31 billion in Bitcoin. And did you know Bitcoin's prices are going up over $2,000 a day? Could Bitcoin rise to $150,000, making it completely unreachable for us in the middle and lower classes? Who knows? I'm not going to officially lay claim to anything being true. But what I would do to be a fly in the fucking room at this wedding. Because could you imagine what the fuck they were talking about? And isn't it ironic that Justin Trudeau, oh JT, has a lot of fucking controversy with India and the Ambani family. He's like the little kid that nobody wanted to play with. But then again, we the people are like the little kids that they don't want to play with. And maybe if you open your eyes a little bit, you won't choose to support that genocide in the Middle East right now. And I'm just going to tell you right now, whether or not you're ready for it, a big change is coming our way. And a lot of secrets are unfortunately still being hidden behind this veil of lies that they've created. To the point of where we're forced to be mindless little consumers who question nothing outside of our comfortable little realities. Wake the fuck up, people. Some weird dark shit is coming. All right, a little conspiratorial, but I think it's a pretty valid point that some wild stuff's going to be going down at the wedding. But that's not really my major takeaway. My major takeaway is that if within the ecosystem of business, global business, billions and trillions of dollars are just slinging this way and that way, where's my payday? You know, why can't I be a rounding error for a couple of the banks? Why can't 5, 10, 15 mil flow into my bank account? I'll do whatever. Like, I'm, st oh, why not me? You know? If the Pentagon can have auditing issues, if our government can misplace money, if SWIFT can be hacked, if equity, like money's flying everywhere. Why can't, as it's flying in the sky, just a little bit of it fly into my pocket? You know, ju just a little bit of it, and I'll go on with my merry life. Like, I I'm, I'm not going to make a big stink of it. I'm not, I'll be so quiet about it. I'll go live on a farm. I'll live on a avocado monkey farm. I'll, I'll raise monkeys. I'll raise avocados and I'll live a quiet, quiet life. It just doesn't happen because of the Rothschilds. Could be. You think they murk the dude before this wedding? That'd be pretty wild. That's really conspiratorial, but I'm more than happy to start 
a conspiracy. Um, just because the market is going to open up in 12 minutes. I want you to know that today the major macroeconomic event is the new home sales report at 10 a.m. ET. Later on this week, we have some inflation reports, some consumer confidence, some GDP updates. So uh, in terms of macroeconomic events, last week was a little bit quiet. This week, it's way more. So definitely pay attention to that. But I want to chit chat about a couple other things. As I've been discussing with you a lot over the past couple of weeks, past couple of months, China's economy and stock market are completely on tilt. And I kind of made a couple of jokes in the past videos of like, oh, I like wonder where they're going to take it to next after some very extreme measures by the government to stop the hemorrhaging. And now we have an answer. We have an update. And this one is probably going to blow your mind a little bit. China's quant clampdown risks damaging fragile markets for years. A sudden crackdown has sparked a frenzy as quant funds suffer losses. So to give you the little quick TLDR of what in the world is going on, over the past couple months, China's stock market has been just nosediving, just like that type of a thing. And it's for a multitude of reasons. You have the shadow banking issues. You have the real estate issues. You have the population issues. You have the political discontent. You just have really their economy slowing down and it goes on and on and on. So there's many reasons for it, except now it's getting out of hand to the point that the government is taking a lot of steps to try to stop it. For example, they basically said no more shorting. Mm -mm. You're not allowed to take those bearish bets. That didn't really help it. Then they went to all the big guys and they said, hey, not only can you not short, but you're not even allowed to be a net seller of your long positions in the first half hour or the last half hour. And that was pretty crazy, but that didn't help. Then they went to the quants. They're like, hey, you have all those fancy schmancy computers that we don't really understand. And we think that that might be a problem. So stop what you're doing. And they're like, what? And now this is getting out of him that those quant firms, they're hemorrhaging, making the whole situation even worse. Chinese hedge funds were looking forward to a holiday break from the market turmoil when trouble started brewing last month. One manager had his short selling orders abruptly rejected by brokers, i.e. no more shorting. Another was cut off from the stock market completely. He said, hey, your job? Uh-uh. Regulators turned up on trading floors at multiple funds to monitor transactions per person. As one fund put it, three sessions of chaotic trading, quote unquote, felt like a whole year to us. Imagine that. You're going to the big funds. Some shadow s government regulator just walks in they're like we're watching you and if you do something we don't like you're gonna have some questions to answer the scenes extraordinary even by the standards of a market that has long operated under the communist party shadow played out in recent weeks in a clampdown that's rewriting the rules of computer driven trading in china the country's once booming quant industry has become the latest casualty of beijing's campaign to stop a four trillion dollar sell-off in stocks this is massive, not only by magnitude, but also by percentage. The U.S. market, new all-time high. European markets, looking very good. You have Japan's market, new all-time high. Australia, looking good. China's market, eh, eh. For international investors becoming increasingly skittish about China, the sudden trading restrictions give them more reason to stay away. Duh. I'm no financial advisor, but I can read the bloody fiery teas, uh, tea leaves on the wall. Yeah, you should stay away. It's not good. China saw a record six months of outflows from the equity market until this month. The foreign direct investment is at a 30-year low following unprecedented crackdowns on the tech and property sectors that have stifled growth. China risks losing out further to countries like India and Japan, which are enjoying a surge in investment. Folks, I get it. If you listen to some of the legends on Wall Street here in the U.S. are like emerging markets, look at China, look at China, look at China. They were dead wrong. I've been screaming for my digital perch here, China. If you fast forward a decade, two decades, it's not going to be the second economy. It's not going to be the world's second market. It's not. The U.S. is going to remain supreme. And then from there, most likely India is coming to number two. And in fact, I don't even think China goes to three. I think it goes to four because I think what we're going to see is a South American country going into the third spot. I get that if you listen to politicians, you're going to hear China's our biggest issue. It's our biggest issue. It's not. It's not. In the short term, there might be problems with Taiwan and political discontent and all that type of stuff. But like I said, a decade or two down the line, they have very serious problems. 
The seemingly panicked actions by authorities risk undermining all the good work done in the past two decades to give China access to global pools of capital. He said that the moves will make even the most battle-hardened investors question whether China is worth the risk. In my humble opinion, it ain't. The new restrictions are sweeping. Quant funds, which rely on computer algorithms to carry out trades really, really fast, will be scrutinized and new entrants will have to report their strategies to regulators before trading. What they're going to do is say, report it. And if there's anything to do that's slightly bearish, they're going to say, well, you're not allowed to do it. Beijing will also expand the scope of reporting to offshore investors via main to, mainland to Hong Kong trading link. Some people are still taking advantage of the weakness and they're basically trying to stop that. The crackdown adds to a series of moves aimed at halting a multi-year plunge in equities, which have been slammed by the housing crisis, weak economic growth, and lingering tensions with the U.S. It also echoes the heavy-handed approach that has been used to clamp down on sectors from the internet to education platforms. Finally, the risk premium on Chinese stocks has to go up going forward because some institutions are going to be unwilling to trade this market. And this is on top of the geopolitical concerns that many foreign investors have had about investing in Chinese stocks. So for those of you who are considering it, potentially interested in it, or maybe you're even looking at Chinese companies trading on the U.S. market through ADRs, American Depository Receipts, very important for you to consider what's going on because it is a no bueno situation. And as I said in previous videos where I'm always excited for the next one because each step that the regulators are taking is seemingly more ridiculous and unheard of than the previous one. Yeah, I'm still excited for the next one because the Chinese government is showing that they are not going to stop until they stop the hemorrhaging. And we are seeing truly unprecedented steps being taken. And yeah, I'm excited to see where it all plays out. Very, very quickly, before that bell goes dingity ding 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 in a couple minutes, I want to let you know this is the final week you can get into the Goonie Discord at these prices. It is $30 a month, $300 a year. As of this Friday, March the 1st, it is going up to $50 a month, $500 a year. And in either case, you can get the first month for free. Just use the code Goonie, G O O N I E, and you will be able to get in. Now, obviously, the question is, is it worth it? Well, Last week alone, I made $13,000. This was all called out in real time. Ask anyone in the Discord if I do it every single morning. Here's what I'm trading today. And then I show everyone the update at the end of the day. Ask them. It happens. And if you don't believe them, the first month is free regardless. So get yourself in there to be grandfathered in at a cheaper cost so it doesn't increase. If you like it, great. Stick around. If you don't, okay, go. Uh, but anyway, yeah, from the 19th to the 23rd, I locked in 13K. And it's actually to the point that I hit a big, big milestone of on Friday, I was able to take out all of the money from my account that I deposited into it at the start of this year. So now ideally, knock on wood, fingers crossed, for the remainder of the year, I'll be able to play with the house's money. But anyway, 13 grand, prices are going up. I mean, Piper, the Piper strategy based on a thousand dollar account had a 20% return last week. It ended up making $205. Once again, a 20% return with the mask risk being 342, which it never even got really tested. So the Piper strategy is there. We do private lectures every single weekend. Uh, my trades, other members trades, trading competitions, the newsletter. I don't know how to be make it more apparent than in one week, it paid for four decades of the service. Uh, it's in the description of the video. My mods will put it in there for you if you want to check it out. Um, you can find the link, but the prices do go up this Friday. Obviously, here's an example of the newsletter. I break down the last week and what I'm looking forward to in the upcoming week, all the major macroeconomic events. Today at 10 a.m., we are going to be getting the new home sales report. I give you all the earnings. I highlight the ones I think you're going to really care about. But most importantly, I give you the seasonality. Now, this is completely free, but I want to give it to you anyway. Uh, anywho, this day, historically, Monday, February the 26th, over the past 25 years, has slightly favored the Bulls. The Bulls have won at 56% of the time, but most recently, when they do win it, they win it pretty handedly. So just something to consider. And then obviously we already went over this, but I uh, kind of on a weekly cadence give you an update of how the Piper strategy works. And basically last week it went, uh, it was batting a thousand. Now with all that being said, I do want to remind you, since we're about to conclude the month of February and get into the month of March, I want to let you know that the month of March is historically not so good for the stock market. In fact, it's really, really choppy. The start of the month is bullish. Then it gets bearish, then it's bullish, then it's bearish, then it's bullish. March is commonly known and denoted to be a very, very choppy trading month. So we are concluding February. Historically, February is weak, but this February is actually really, really strong. But anyway, March historically, is that a guarantee for this upcoming March? 
Absolutely not. I just want to let you know some of how history has played out for the month. It is a choppy, choppy month. But if we can survive that, what's exciting is April is historically a very strong month. So that could be cool as well. Now, five things to know before that stock market bell goes dingity, ding, ding, ding today, February the 26th, the Fed versus NVIDIA. Well, NVIDIA saved the market, saved the economy last week, propelled us to new heights. And the Fed is still, I guess, staying pretty hawkish, uh, but we're going to see who's going to win out. Buffett's blooming billions, almost worth $1 trillion now. Crumbling in Carolina, Nikki Haley, embarrassed. Don't call it deflation. All right, we'll go over that in a second. Claiming more on baggage, baggage fees going up for most airlines. All right, let's get over here. Let's get set up for the day. Let's get set up for the day. Set up for the day. All right, well, Bitcoin, I could leave out the 15 minute. All right, so right now, the SPY slightly green by about 17 cents and the Q slightly green as well. That bell is about to go dingity ding 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 and i'm going to try to get more of these apex accounts passed which is exactly why i need to know if you guys are bullish or bearish at market open uh i see youtube's vote i see youtube's vote and it so all right you guys are look at d gen bull i'm clicking it on it's on we're going to see if we can get some of these accounts passed. And then I have some other just random systems trying to trade throughout the day to see how they do. But if I coded this one properly, remember last week how we had like a slight issue. Um, it fired a minute off. I believe I have since fixed that problem. I believe it, it's we'll see. We'll see. This should be firing off exactly at 930. You guys are pinky promising to me that being bullish is the right decision at market open. We're going to see how it goes. So on the bottom screen right here, this will be the large degenerate bet. I did enable degen bull. And then there's other ones that are just going to rip. But I want to know if I coded this properly. It should be firing at literally 930. Like no hands. I'll, I'll have my hands right here. Right, right. Where do you, got, where do you guys want my hands for proof? for proof that this will work for like, I'm not, I'm not touching it. There's no funny, there's no, no funny business. Order filled. What just happened? Well, now, now I'm confused. Now I'm okay. So three of them locked in, but these big ones that you promised me would work are seemingly about to blow out. So this one worked the bot at open. That one worked, uh, but your degenerate bet is down thousands of dollars. So thanks, guys. Uh, appreciate that. Appreciate you ruining my... Wait, do you guys know what you're talking about? No way do you guys know what you're talking about. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how tough you guys really are. Oh, my God. Are you guys going to get it again? Are you guys really going to get it again? Oh, you were close. Order filled. Order filled. You nailed it again. Congratulations, chat. You guys did do your studying over the week, and I appreciate that. Three grand, three grand, three grand, three grand, three grand, 135, 90, 90. You guys did your studying. You guys did your... I know. I did doubt you for a second, and my apologies. I think I learned my lesson that there's no need to doubt you guys, even though... Maybe it looks a little bit rough here and there and elsewhere. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's, that's I'm paying for some Texas Roadhouse this weekend. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I think even better. So you guys were right. The first bot was right. And then I think another bot should be running soon. So we're going to leave this there for a second. But let's just see how we're looking. Ooh, NVIDIA over 800 coins up four percent as well rum is up 1.7 percent oh shoot i forgot to put the rum numbers out all right someone remind me to do it but i'll just give them to you in a second but we'll get these rum numbers out i knew i was forgetting something this morning i knew it i knew it i knew it so for those of you who care about rumbles short numbers short interest 17.11 cost of borrow 57.9 utilization 93.2 um, but someone remind me to tweet that out i just want to see what's going on at market open today 
Uh, I do want to see this. How are we looking? How are we looking? Ooh, I definitely don't necessarily need these alerts. Don't necessarily need those alerts. All right. Let's see how things actually go today. Let's see how we're going. Well, once again, I do appreciate that. It's always nice that you guys are more than willing to make me thousands and thousands of dollars with your trading expertise. Okay, let's copy this, compose, paste as plain text. You gotta do a little bit of a switcheroo here for whatever reason. What were the numbers? 17. So short interest dropping ever so slightly, 57.9, 57.9. Nine. So the cost is also going down and the utilization 93.2, 93.2. All right. We'll throw that out into the interwebs. That's there. This is here. That's there. Wait, what was that about Microsoft? Microsoft and mistrial AI announced new partnership to accelerate AI innovation and introduce mistrail, mistral, mistral large first on Azure. Announcing multi-year partnership between what's, what is that? I've never heard of that AI. Is it a good one? Is it a worthwhile one? Uh, all right. Maybe we should answer those questions after we see how the market opens. All right. Coin is already off to the races up 4.8%. You have Nvidia up 1.7 meta mm, slightly red Netflix, slightly green. Uh, what time is it? What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? I think the second barrage of bots should be firing somewhat soon. I believe if I did this right, if I did it right, which there's no guarantee, uh, especially because the queues are now about to hit a new intraday low, they should definitely be firing. Uh, we're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see uh hang on one second i think i need to switch this account let's see what happens let's see if i did it right look mom no hands let's see let's see if we can lock in another 300 dollars. the goal right now is another 300 smackaroo come on come on order filled look at that you guys see how quick was that the usain bolt of tr did you am i the market bada bing bada boom you're gonna have to watch that back in one eighth speed to capture that look at that uh, i don't think i necessarily hit 300 wait i might have 135 125 and then 60. so that yeah that rounds up to 300 that's about right all right we're on to something it's working it's working slow and steady wins the race and just so you guys know, that trade brought to you by Public. Pinned to the top of chat, in the description of the video, partner of the channel, and they also just happen to be really cool people. Public is a trading brokerage that is now getting into the world of options, and it is my preferred place to trade options because you get a rebate for every contract you trade. And you get paid in both directions. If you buy then sell, you get the rebate twice. It adds up. If you are a prolific options trader, in my humble opinion, there is no better place for you to be trading options because no other brokerage pays you a rebate to trade options. Now, you might be thinking, how do they do it? The fee that these market makers are paying them for order flow, public gives you half. All these other brokerages, not to name names, they keep all of it. They keep all of it. Public is saying, hey, we want to prove to our clients that we always have and will have their back and truly support you as a retail trader. So in doing so, they're giving you guys 50% of the rebate, uh, which comes out to be about 18 cents per side per contract. So it could add up very, very, very rapidly. If this is something you're interested in, which you should be, it's pinned to the top of chat. It's in the description of the video. If you're an options trader at the, you got to check it out. Like there, there's no reason to not. That's crazy. Um, any word on public will, when it will have verticals, I'm told soon, but I don't think there's a specific date schedule. Uh, and obviously with that, I want to be upfront with you guys. It just rolled out. So they're continually adding on things such as higher level of options, such as verticals, that type of a thing. Um, they're coming out with new updates to their UI. So like 
it just launched like it's not like it's been around for years and years and years but to me as it's going through those growing pains it's still worthwhile to use because of the rebate and if you want to get advantage of that rebate or take advantage of that rebate i think you need to be locked in by march 31st so you have about a month but just make the account today it's free to download it's free to sign up and see if you like it i there's really no reason to not like it it's awesome uh but anyway uh shout out to public pin to the top of chat in the description of the video all right, uh, the queue's turning right back around. The spy going up. <laughs> Dashboard, Spot Gamma. Uh, just so you know, Spot Gamma is doing another free options tutorial tomorrow. Uh, just so everyone knows, I think it's at 1 p.m. But what are we about? Eight minutes into the day, options picking up, price picking up. So thus far, everything kind of moving together. The queue's swinging back around. Coin pushing, NVIDIA catching a bit of a bid. I do want to remind everyone that at 10 a.m. is public an app? Yeah, just like every other trading brokerage, it's an app. It's an app. They have a website that you could trade off of. There's a web app and a mobile app, if that's your question. Uh, wish they had a Reveal on Weeble. I like options on Weeble. Well, they don't. And also, Weeble's never going to give it to you, so go to public. Um, okay okay arm is well all of semiconductors just keep ripping i mean nvidia's in the green you're just smh is moving 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 all right so i do want to remind everyone at 10 so we have about 22 minutes 22 minutes until until wait what someone asked me if a got blocked i don't no, I don't think so. I'm scrolling through. Not that I see. I don't know. Um, not that I see on my end. Good morning. Are you bullish on the spy right now? Buy calls. My mother was an alcoholic. <laughs> um those types of questions i think are the incorrect questions of oh are you bullish are you bearish like what do you think the next bar is going to be where do you think it's going to go that shouldn't be the question the question should be right now statistically is it favorable to take the bullish bet or the bearish bet this idea of like gut feeling is silly and the proof for that is the fact that 90 to 95 percent of retail traders end up worse off than when they started so if you're just doing what everyone else is doing, that 90 to 95%, you too will probably end up losing money. This idea of like, oh, I just have a gut feeling. It looks bullish. Like how many times do we hear that? Like, oh, it looks bullish. It feels bullish. Oh, like I think it's going to hit. Like what? Do you, what? That makes literally no sense to win. And I'm not really talking about investing. Investing is a different thing. And this was like a major topic that we discussed in the Goonie Discord like lecture yesterday was if you want to be an active trader, Think about it more like blackjack. When the odds are favorable, you take advantage of it. When the odds aren't favorable, don't play at all or don't play as big. Um, so the idea of trying to be predictive, like you don't sit at the blackjack table and be like, oh, the next card coming out is a jack of hearts. You don't do that. When you play blackjack, for any of you who know anything about blackjack, you, you just say, okay, like these are the odds of the situation. Um, I thought this was a casino. Exactly. It is a casino. So play the casino properly. You don't sit down at blackjack and have a prediction of the next card coming out. You play the odds of like, okay, here are my cards. This is what the dealer is showing. Should I hit or should I not hit? It is a casino and there's better ways to play at the casino. And I think that's just like not really taught. Not really taught. Uh, what do we have here? All right, I'm getting some alerts. Some alerts. This, that, the other thing. This, that, the other thing. Uh, upswing in the options world right here. A little bit of an upswing. So that should be pretty solid to be bullish. So I assume the next bot will be bullish because the options are upswinging right now. And I'm looking at the net delta. So if you look here on Spot Gamma, which is my favorite options analysis tool by far, like I don't even, the second place is so far beyond, like so far down the list that it just doesn't even matter. The white line is the price of the S&P 500. The purple line is the all expiration net delta all contracts expiring and then the teal line is just the zero dte expiration net delta 
So it's nice to see what's going on in the movement of price relative to what's happening in the derivatives market with it. Sometimes it makes sense and they all go together. Sometimes there's large divergence and one of the directions has to yield. Other times you just see things flattening out, maybe suggesting a reversal, things of that nature. Um, but I'm telling you, if you want a real time breakdown of what's going on in the options market, I get that there's a lot of other tools out there. I've used them all. I've researched them all. I promise you there is no better tool on the market available to retail traders of what's going on in the options market beyond spot gamma, like whatever you're going to name it's second place at best. And that distance between first and second is dramatic, 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 dramatic. What was Buffett's secret stock? Uh, I, there's suggestions about it, like ideas, but it, it, we don't know. I don't think it was like actually fully announced. I don't think it was fully announced. Rum stats on shorts. I just did it and I tweeted it out too. I literally did it on real time on the stream. Just rewind a little bit. Um, NVIDIA bit of a vomit are things gonna go uh-oh uh-oh spaghettios uh-oh spaghettios i think uh-oh i'm a little concerned here i think i'm about to have two bots fight with each other and i think they might be going the oh like the opposite way if i remember the math correctly which like i said is definitely going to be a little awkward and a little problematic for all of us in here a little awkward and a little problematic coins going at least coins looking good oddly enough though coins ripping uh bitcoin's pretty calm just chilling at 51.5 a little strange little strange if you ask me Wow, Q's just hit a new intraday low and the SPY, the five minutes bullish, the 10 minutes bullish, the 30 minutes bullish, but maybe we're just coming down to the dip zone at 5,100 on ES. That's on the futures market to be precise. To be precise, uh, Buffett's secret was that he had, no, she's not asking what his secret was. He, we know from his recent filings that they've been investing in a new company that's considered like a secret investment. It's just not publicly order available. Order submit. Order filled. Order filled. What happened? All right. I think I might've missed something here. I think we all missed something, but I think more money came into the account. The goal is basically by the end, one, two, three, four. I want these all to be green. I'll win this day when all of these turn green and we're, they're adding up. We have six left, six left. Um, so I don't know which one's just traded. I'm thinking I could figure it out. I think it was this one, 135, 90, and then probably one. 24. I don't know. I think three accounts just traded and I'll have to figure it out later. Um, but the goal is for these to all be green by the end. So, Hey, that one worked. That one worked. All right. The queues did tag a new intraday low on that in 15 minutes. We're getting a report. And then other than that, there are a couple of the things I've prepared that I want to go over with all of you. We'll watch spot gamma options are starting to dip. Options are starting to dip. Tens of millions of euros of restricted EU goods sold to Russia. Oh, Selena Gomez. Okay. Tesla's Cybershark the finest in apocalypse defense technology. A uh, fire effect in 5D cinema. Um, I mean, it's cool, but it feels like they're just lighting the place on fire. All right. We missed anything else. Oh, Shane Gillis is breathing life back into SNL. This will probably get me DMCA, but it's so freaking funny that I think or we should watch it. Submitted. What? Hello? 
Order filled. All right, we're getting there. Uh, 150, 135, 135. Three more. Three more, and then we're just batting a thousand. We're batting a thousand. Robots have a mind of their own, but sometimes they work. 50% of the time, they're right. 100% of the time. So, uh, should be doing one more. And honestly, there's been so much chaos and so much confusion here of what this money is or isn't that I'm a little bit scared to ask at this point. It's going to be what it's going to be. It's going to be what it's going to be. All right. Uh, we have time to watch this. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not? And done. We're on it. Quickly, now. Somebody's paying for coverage they don't need. <laughs> Liberty Mutual lets you customize and save, so you only pay for what you need. Whoa, really? Oh! What the f***, Limu? He barely moved! Jesus, I need to think. I think I would have noticed if he had a... Almost like you wanted this to happen, Lemu. Act like a goddamn cowboy. You know what they do to insurance salesmen in jail? <laughs> God damn it, smart Bob, about do this. it. Well, looky here. Guess this guy wasn't as innocent well, you as you thought. You knew this guy was a dealer. This was also you could steal his stash and sell it for yourself. Don't worry, you'll get your half. I don't want it. You're dirty, Limu, and now you're dirtied my ass up too. <laughs> kind of like how Liberty Mutual looks out for their customers. By, by letting them customize and save. <laughs> oh God, he's still alive. What are we gonna do? <laughs> Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> where was the other thing that I had? Uh, breaking MicroStrategy has acquired an additional 3,000 Bitcoin, 155 mil uh, at the average price of 51.8K. MicroStrategy now holds 193,000 Bitcoin. And then also we have this. Uh, I dare you to find a better explanation for Bitcoin than this. So show this to your grandparents who don't get the internet money. Bitcoin is internet money. It's a system of money that exists on the internet, uh, was created on the internet, and it allows you to send and receive value the, the same way you can send and receive an email anywhere in the world, instantaneously, without intermediaries. Um, and... That's kind of what you see at first glance. Behind that, it's a whole platform. It is, as the title of the book says, the Internet of Money. It is, it is a set of protocols that allow you to uh, basically exchange value with other people. But you can do a lot more with it than just that. Most people will use it as a currency. It's basically money that you can uh, transmit from your smartphone to somebody else's smartphone directly, just like cash, um, but electronic. And the thing about it that's unique is that it's not owned by any corporation, any bank, or any government. Just like the web isn't owned by anyone, or email isn't owned by anyone. And there's lots of companies that can send and receive email. There's lots of companies that can set up websites. There's a lot of companies that can set up applications that use Bitcoin. It's really quite interesting what happens when you create a form of money that is truly global. We really don't have forms of money that are truly global. If you, even, even with your very advanced banking system and your access to all of the technology that you have in the American banking system, if you try to send money to some countries, it's almost impossible to do. And I experience this every time I get paid in Bitcoin. I'll go into a conference in Europe, um, and I'll do one what conference with the banking uh, industry and one conference with the Bitcoin community in the what 
No, that code wasn't supposed to be left on. I was supposed to turn it off. Shit. All right, you got to work for me, brother. That's my mistake. All right, I think I got lucky there. All right, I need to turn that off. Oh, that could have, that could have been something. I just need to turn this all off. Uh, left the code running. It's like leaving the oven on when you leave the house. Not, not supposed to happen. So I got lucky. Those got buffed up to 300, 265, and 265. Honest mistake. You know, no one ever really accused me of being like the most detail-oriented guy. So uh, got lucky. We'll take it. We're going to take it. Uh, but that rogue trade bot had a mind of its own and I just needed to turn it off. There's only one more bot that should be running today and it will, I guess I'll have to look at the market. I have an idea of when it's going to go. Probably not for a bit, probably a couple of minutes because nothing really is going on. The little Bitcoin conference is going to be free to attend and I, I don't make any money, but they sometimes cover some of my expenses and I'll send an invoice <laughs> and the banking a industry lot. conference will send me a wire transfer. It takes on average four weeks for me to get it with several calls to find out where it went, what's going on, why did it get lost? And it takes me on average 15 minutes to get paid in Bitcoin, no matter which country I'm being paid in. Is, this is a cynic in me. Is this because when they take the money and they're transferring it and they're moving it around and now it's sitting in banks when banks have money if they have your money even if it's just for a few weeks they have the opportunity to use that money to make more money are they doing that um it, it certainly doesn't uh it doesn't hurt to keep it a bit longer they're doing it primarily because um, because the system has a series of intermediaries, and each of those intermediaries represent a risk. If one of those intermediaries says, I have the money for Mr. Antonopoulos's wire, and you give that money to Antonopoulos, but the intermediary doesn't give it to you, you're out of money, right? So there's, there's risk. With every intermediary you put in, there's risk, and that's called counterparty risk. The, because of the way the banking system is with perhaps five, six, seven intermediaries in a single transfer, uh, that creates a lot of cumulative risk, and they protect with that risk by slowing things down. And um, that risk doesn't exist in Bitcoin because it's from one party directly to another. No counterparties. That's one of the core principles. The funny thing, I, I had this conversation with my bank. I said it was, I had done this um, conference in Germany, Frankfurt, at the headquarters of the Bundesbank. Now, for those of your viewers or listeners who don't know, the Bundesbank is the federal bank of Germany. And they probably consider the, the United States Federal Reserve to be a mediocre creditor compared to the Bundesbank. This is like the best credit rating on the planet. The right? Bundesbank. And I'm going to speak I've to never the conference there, and they're paying me for my expenses. They send a wire transfer. And I call my bank, and after four weeks, they finally find it and tell me, we've received your bank, your bank wire transfer. We're going to hold it um, because of the risk profile. I'm like, I don't understand. Well, you haven't been paid by this particular payer before, so we're going to put a hold on it. I said, you do know this is the Bundesbank. Bundesbank. <laughs> you are holding, and they held it for two weeks. You are holding for two weeks because of the credit risk of the Federal Bank of Germany, the most creditworthy institution. I'm not trying to receive money from Somalia. You know, <laughs> this isn't even something weird. And if, if even they can't pay me in the age of the internet instantaneously, there is something wrong with this banking system. And there is. Because there I is. got paid for the Bitcoin conference I was doing in the same town instantaneously. I mean, the delay in our banking is absolutely ridiculous. The fact that it's closed on the weekend. If I'm not even talking about Bitcoin in terms of, oh, like, can we make money off of it? Will it appreciate in value? Which I do think it'll appreciate in value. I'm more than anything excited about the technology itself because the way money works, not just in America, but globally, it's slow. It's outdated. Uh, it's an antique. It's a relic of old times. The fact that we can't bank on the weekend the fact that you can't just send 
money and someone gets it in a relatively quick amount of time, the fact that our government is so fucking nosy and they want to know everything you're doing with every single dollar, it's just the old adage of keeping the honest people honest. That's all it's doing. If people are want to commit crime or it's illegal or illicit or nefarious, they're going to do it. And it's just, it's so ridiculous. And then also, I think one thing that's not discussed enough is you have a high density. So I guess maybe to best explain this is our banking right now always has an intermediary. I can't really send you money. I need something in between. I can't just send money to your wallet. There's a bank or another bank or something involved there. So with the, I guess, trend of banking, they're fewer they're larger and now they're more powerful. So what does that do? That puts any of these fail points, it, it, you're not diversifying your fail points anymore. As the banks become fewer, larger, and more powerful, that's the fail point. So all of a sudden, we're relying on them to always have their stuff together. And it's simply not true. We've seen them get hacked. Look at the Equifax app, a Swift, the whole money payment sending system that got hacked. One of the largest digital like heists ever. I think it was $1.4, $1.8 billion. Not talking about Bitcoin as an investment opportunity. I'm talking about it on this discussion as just understand the tech itself. It is a better form of money. And really at that point, that brings up the conversation of like, what is money anyway? Um, but really, I mean, if you listen to some of like the hardcore geeky crypto people, they're like, oh no, Bitcoin is a, it's a protocol. It's a money protocol. Uh, but I don't know if that really resonates with most people. I would think that like a more palatable explanation of something like Bitcoin is it is a, it's the next advancement in money. Historically, we started off whatever, bartering. It would be like, I will give you some wood, chopped wood, and you give me beaver pelts. And then all of a sudden it went into merchants and it was more, okay, like a centralized thing where there could be, like it was a hub, it was trade. And then merchants that thought people were reliable, they started allowing them to have IOUs. Then the IOUs were backed by the local government. Then the local government back in the IOUs came up with the currency and blah, blah, blah. And like throughout history, we see this trend of money becoming more efficient and more accessible. That's, that's a definition of what you want quality money to be accessible. You want it to be hard money. Basically you want it to be easy to use, but like hard to make more of. And right now in the U S dollar, it's very easy to use, but it's also very easy for them to make more of. Or we don't want that. Submitted. Oh brother. Oh brother. It looks like it decided to go long right when the report came out. Probably not its best decision. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Yeah, there we go. Back up. Come on, robot. Pull it up. Use your magnet. A lot of people don't know this about my robots, but they have built-in magnets in the system. Nope, that's going the wrong way. Nope, that's that's clearly that's not the right way. Obviously, it's supposed to be green. This is preordained. This is predecided that this trade's gonna hit. There we go. Go back up. Go back up. Go back up. All right. The first minute didn't work. Let's see if we have any better luck on the second minute. Uh, what account is trading right now? Oh, I have so many accounts on this. Uh, ninth one? Was it ninth one? This one. Okay. I have the right account up. Let's see what we're doing. Let's see what we're doing. Bad beat thus far. Come on. Go back up. This is the final one of the day. Final one of the day, and we're locked in over here. Let's go. Let's go, SpaghettiOs. Order filled. Bada bing, bada boom. Batten a thousand. Green, 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 green. I believe this is 20 accounts. So I think on all 20 accounts, made money. Obviously, the exciting ones were just these 3K, 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 3K. And then all these other robot stuff, just getting in their scalps on the day. Accidentally ran this bot twice. Wasn't supposed to, but hey, 
I got lucky with it and I don't need to push my luck. When you're batting a thousand on 20 different accounts, it is time to shut it down, me amigo. It is time to shut it down. Uh, you got to sometimes realize when you're lucky, you don't want to necessarily always push it. Um, so all I have to do now is my options trade of the day. And thus far, we have not gotten a signal. And that's because we are not trending. Um, I mean, I'm not going to ever really give the secret sauce of how Piper does or doesn't work, but it needs momentum. And when it's just chopping sideways, there's going to be no signal. Piper is inherently built on different momentum readings. And if there's no momentum, it's just not going to fire off. What was the news? New home sales just came out. New home sales. Uh, Profit, do you have that? I'm sure Profit will be posting it. Matt, 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 look up. So funny. Rosa mocked by Joe Biden. Uh, all right, I will find this. Where do I look it up? What service is it on? What is this? All right, I think I found it. Someone just asked me to react to this. I haven't seen it yet. Let's let it rip. Buonasera, Presidente Biden. Presidente. Good evening, Mr. Pre no, President uh, Biden. President. Here we are, President, Pres uh, President Biden. Qui. Here. Yes, yes. Good evening. Buonasera. Buonasera. As yes. Eh? I said to the president of Israel, sì. Mikhail Gorbachev. No, no, non è Gorbachev, non è Gorbachev il presidente dell'Israele, no, no. Sorry, Michael Jordan. <laughs> no, 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 no. When he went to the moon. Quando è andato sulla luna. And he uh, was shot from Dallas. Ma non hanno sparato a lui a Dallas, quello è Kennedy. No, sia fermo, fermo, Presidente. <laughs> Presidente. Long shot from Dallas to the moon. Si sta, si sta confondendo con Kennedy. Uh, 14 sì. million sì. Eh? Mi miles for Ford. Mi... Vabbè, ma non, è, ma non è lui, Presidente. To, uh, Mr. President. His wife La moglie. Try to bring him. No, ma quello è Kennedy. È Into the cabriolet, do you? No, no, sta yeah. facendo confusione, Presidente. Yes. Sta facendo confusione, evidente. Sorry, eh? Sì. It was on the moon. Non è andato sulla It was luna. Mars. No. Mars attack. Ma che Mars attack? No. Beautiful no. film. Eh? Where Netanyahu sang. No, ma Netanyahu, no. Netanyahu è, è, è il Presidente di Israele. Non cantava. Over. Over. The garage. No, the rainbow era. Va bene. <laughs> the rainbow. This. Cosa fa? Dove va, Presidente? Cosa fa? Presidente? <laughs> Mr. President. No. Stay quiet. Stay quiet. Ok. No, no. Oh, yeah. please, 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 please. Cosa sta dicendo? Cosa sta facendo? Oh, yeah. lui. No, no. Quella è la, è la valigetta dei codici atomici quella. No, no. 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 Lei non sta bene. No. No. <ride> Io l'hanno fatto grosso, forse. I forgot to take the pills. No, ma non sono le pillole, non, è, non sono no, le medicine. I call the, the nurse. No, 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 non no, no. Che Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> Somewhere over the garage. No, no, rainbow. <laughs> oh, geez, that's some good stuff. They tried to jump Cam Newton? He's huge. You can tell it's Cam Newton by the fancy schmancy hat. Doesn't he have bodyguards? <laughs> Why do they Why do they try to jump Cam Newton? I'm I'm a bit confused. Coinbase are an enemy of Bitcoin. Do you agree? Wait, what?
Yeah. They're an enemy of Bitcoin, I think. Yeah. Driving. Got the final word in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> enemy of Bitcoin, I like it. We can right. slip that up and play that one out to, hmm. to people on Twitter. Right. Yeah. They're an, an enemy of Bitcoin. Why would they be an enemy of Bitcoin? What am I? What am I missing? What, what am I missing on that one? Grandpa, what was it like when Uber cost five dollars and Chipotle burrito was only seven? <laughs> Cut it. Cut it. What's the difference between conspiracy and truth? About six months. Nobody wants to get rid of white people. That's a far right conspiracy. Okay, then now show me a picture of the founding fathers. <laughs> Oh, the Gemini saw from last week was hilarious. It was too funny. Too funny. All right. Are we starting to pick up a bit? A wee bit? A wee bit? Uh, brother? Brother. Brother. I'll tip. All right, let's see if I can slap an order in here. Let's see if we can get some form of a fill. I did. Oh, I should, I should let you guys know. Men, women, and children who are watching the show, I'm going to start on a journey soon. And by soon, I mean today. I mean, we're, we're on the journey. Like, it, it's happening. Like we're, we're not starting it soon. The soon is now I'm starting a journey now and this new journey now is for me to try to be a little bit more conservative in my trades. And now let me explain why I'm trying to be a little bit more conservative. So at the start of the year, I put money into an account and I said, I'm going to trade this system. And then the system didn't work. In the first week, there was one day where it took a hit and I was mad and I was angry and I was upset and I was emotional. So you know what I tried to do? I tried to trace that loss and I made the loss worse. I was in a situation where I was in a hole and someone gave me a shovel and they said, hey, do you want to use this shovel to get out of the hole? Or do you want to dig yourself deeper? And like any good degenerate in the market, I looked at that shovel selling salesman and i said brother give me two because i'm going deeper i'll see you in china and that's what i did i was in a hole and i dug myself deeper now did i have fits of anger yes did i have episodes of crying on the shower floor yes did i perhaps perchance Wake up a few nights with night terrors, screaming as I had gambled away not only my rent money, but my wedding money. The answer to that would be yes. That was all in week one. Week one was not my week. So I, you know what I did? I found the closest mirror. I looked, in, I looked my own reflection in my eyes and I peered deep into my soul. And as always, I saw potential. I looked into the eyes of that hollow man, that shell of a man, Matt Coors, February, excuse me, that's not right. Matt Coors, January 5th, shambles. It disgusts me to even think about it. And I said, hey man, you got to get your shit together. You got, you got to. You have a small kitten who relies on you. You now have responsibility. Hey, bro, you're not riding solo anymore. That meow mix is going to pay for itself. That military grade laser you bought to shine on the floor so your cat can follow it around. That's not free. These things cost money. So upon this reflection, this spiritual like transcendence, I said, I got to pull it together. And I committed. I didn't commit to quitting alcohol. I didn't commit to going to the gym. I didn't commit to quitting drugs. I didn't even commit to being a better fiance. 
I committed to following the system. Granted, I didn't exactly follow the system. I played it a little bit too big, but I thought to myself, if I can stick to it, I'll be able to recoup all of these losses. So I ended up from January, whatever, 7th or 8th, whatever that Monday was, the first Monday of the second week of January, I committed to it. And like I said, I'll be the first to admit it. I played it a little big, but fortunately, I only had one misstep. That was in mid-January that the system was able to absorb. And as of Friday, I was able to take out all of the money I put into the account for this year. And now I, it was left over with $50,000. So basically, I put my own money into it. I took a hit and a really bad hit. And then I said, time to grow the fuck up. And I started trading how I knew I was supposed to trade. And as of yesterday, as of Friday, um, as of yesterday, the the account, the uh, the bank request went through. But as of Friday, the account had enough profits in it that I took out all of the money I put it into this year. And there was still a leftover 50K. So now I'm just trading with the bank's money, the casino's money. And on this new journey, I need to be a bit more reasonable about how hard I'm swinging every day, especially for the past two weeks. I found myself like every single day just swinging for the fences. Not a good way to be. It's just, I it was lucky because they were soft pitches and I was knocking them out of the park, but you can't always count on them being soft pitches like that. Um, so a bit of a lucky streak after kind of a bit of a bad beat, but what I need to do now, and I was running all the math over the weekend, is I will be targeting a certain percentage return on my account every single day. Now that percentage return, it's not finite. It is actually, it's going to be variable based on the setup and based on what Piper does or doesn't tell me to do. So it, it is variable, but I have a certain risk I'm allowed to take every day and a certain profit target I'm going to hit. So if the profit target is there, whatever, 10 minutes into the trade, I'm going to take it. I'm going to be done for the day. And then if it takes a while, hopefully it hits. I would prefer that it happens right away. Uh, but there's going to, I just want to get the mind right of, especially if you're in the discord of like where I was swinging and it was whatever, three, four, five K a day. No, no, no. I think what I want to do is do it percentage based. I have a percentage target of the account. I have a risk for the account. And I think if I run this for a quarter, like one, like basically March, April, May, I think if I run it for three months, like one business quarter, uh, I think I should be able to get a return of about $200,000 if the math works out the way that it should work out. Um, so basically what I'm trying to do is stay disciplined, be a monk like trader, stick to the system. And my goal is to turn 50 K into roughly the math should suggest about 200 K, uh, is, is what I'm, is what I'm looking for, what I'm hoping for. And we'll see if it plays out. We'll see if it plays out. Uh, but I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping, I honestly, I feel less pressure because now I'm playing a bit smaller and also now I'm playing with the casino's money. So like, of course I don't want it to blow up. Of course I want to like, just keep crushing it and crushing it and crushing it. Uh, obviously I would prefer to do that. Uh, but I think, I think I could do like a cool challenge with myself on this. So just want to let everyone know what's going on there. Want to let what I know is going on there two to 5% a day. Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, could be lower, could be higher. Once again, the basically I have a system that tells me the momentum uh, about a half hour into the day. And based on the strength of the momentum, I will either scale up or scale down my target for the day. So it's a variable betting system because it doesn't logically make sense to every single day, the market's different. So that doesn't mean you should be betting the same size because sometimes the opportunity is more favorable. Sometimes it's less favorable. Obviously in the less favorable environments, it makes sense to not bet at all or to bet less, obviously. And then in the more favorable environments, that's when you would want to play it a bit bigger. So to have a stagnant bet size, I math, like it's not just me, like math would say that that's like a poor way to engage in the market. Uh, what are we Tesla pushing? I need Tesla considerably higher. I need meta higher than it is. I need Netflix higher than it is. I need, I would just love for some green, green candle explosions. 
XLF, the financial sector, taking a hit ever since the new home sales report. Uh, speaking of the new home sales, what was the actual number? New home sales, pretty close, actually. The forecast was 680. It came in at 661, so a little bit lower. Is that what's hurting the financial sector right now? Tech's actually holding. So the storyline last week was the spies holding, but tech's going down and all the other sectors are keeping it up. But now it's kind of flipped. Tech's trying to hold, but we have the financial sector taking a clear hit ever since 10 a.m. XLF. Interesting. XLE, little bit of a dip. XLV taking a hit. XLU, utilities definitely taking a hit this morning. XLI dipping a little. So everything started dipping at 10 a.m. except for tech. Tech is the one that's holding on, which is, you could check it out with XLK. But financials, and, and well, energy is just turning, but energy had a good opening session. So it's really financials that are, and then the other sectors are a bit smaller, but utilities, industrials, healthcare, all taking a hit ever since 10 a.m. Interesting. And coin is just ripping right now. Uh, I don't know if you guys are catching this. I already locked in. Um, now we have Bitcoin on the move. Bitcoin bottomed at 50.8. Nine and now we're up to 52.2. So crypto's on the move. Coinbase is going, Bitcoin is going. Coin is real. What's interesting is coin led this. At first, we weren't really seeing anything in Bitcoin, and Coinbase exploded from 169 to 182. And then eventually Bitcoin started coming along for the ride. But uh pretty dramatic outperformance by coin today. It's up 9.8%. Tesla's having a good day as well. Tesla up. Tesla's up. Uh, the tech sector catching a bid right now. All right, let's set some alerts. I should have done this a bit ago. Should have done this a bit ago. All right, let's wait for any breakouts or breakdowns, see what in the world is going on today. All right, so those alerts are set. We're not going to miss it. Coins going, Bitcoin's going, Tesla's looking good. Uh, the five minute on the S&P 500 futures market trying to save itself. It was bullish this morning, but now it's in no man land. It's in that neutral territory. The 10 minute, same thing, bullish, but bounce right off of this. The 30 minute, also bullish, but uh, kind of in its cloud. So right now, I would say that the bulls tentatively have control. Now, if we want to look at the tech sector, in all theory, that should be doing even better, 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 better. Five minute did get knocked bearish, but then rallied to go bullish. 10 minute, once again, knocked bearish, rallied to go bullish. 30 minute saved itself and the daily's been bullish for quite a while. So bullish, 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 mm, neutral, bullish, neutral. The, the spy is a little suspect right now. I would What I would like to see, and I'm not the biggest like, oh, I broke this trend line, but what will give me a bit of confidence in this bullish day is a break and close above that trend line. And I think if anything, it will be led by the tech sector. But for that to happen, you're going to need to see financials stop vomiting. Financials have just been hit, hit, hit. What's TLT doing? Bonds are vomiting right now too. Did a Fed member say something? Is that what's going on? Like why or why is what's going on in the financial sector right now? There's no way new home sales had that big of an impact. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon joins the Dow Monday, giving the 127 year old index a needed upgrade as it trails the S and P 500. That should be bullish for it because more fund managers will be forced to buy it if they're tracking the Dow. Hi, Mark Health says it's combining tech from Epic, Google and Epic to give doctors easier access to data. Okay. Tesla rival BYD launches electric supercar that could take on Ferrari, $233,000. I am not seeing anything that would be impacting the financial sector the way this is. I mean, bonds open today at 94 and it's just been vomiting all day. Uh, if tech can get going, that's going to raise the SPY, but it would be a lot easier for the SPY to go if financials just stop getting absolutely brutalized. Oh, come on, bounce, bounce, nothing. We're just waiting on the larger time frame. Potential breakout on the SPY. 
kind of interesting to say, even though we've been, um, here's your potential breakout alert on SPX. Um, clear, uh, it's actually even easier to said, see without this ribbon, but uh, just lower highs, higher lows, bit of a wedge consolidation. This isn't my favorite pattern. It has about a 55% accuracy, but it could give you a reasonable risk to reward setup because you could just choose to risk a recent low, something like 81, and then your target would be uh, 5,111 or higher, but potentially breaking out, try to get going this morning, smacked right in. So watching this just to see how it all plays out on the S&P 500 uh, coin, just crushing it today. Would love for Tesla to get to like, I mean, I would love it to explode, but above 200 would be a nice win. All right, what else are we missing? What else are we missing? What are we missing? What are we missing? What are we missing? Someone's buying SPY 2.4 million short duration puts. Interesting. How do you know if it was like, is taxation theft? No, Gemini must be stopped. All right, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Missing anything. Not that I can see. Uh, this is what I wanted, financial juice. Fear and greed index, very greedy. Crypto fear and greed index, very greedy. New home sales, all right. Forecast, all right. New home sales isn't going to do what it did to XLF, at least not historically. St. West walks out with Messi before the Inter Miami game. Good for him. Why not? This is Elizabeth Warren exiting a private jet and hiding behind her aid once she realizes she's being filmed. Remember, Elizabeth Warren is a climate activist. Elizabeth Warren wants to kill crypto because crypto is killing the environment. But Elizabeth Warren spent 721000 of campaign money on private jets in 2020. Good old Elizabeth Warren for you. My apologies if I just ruined your hearing. Let's see how awkward it is. There she is. There's Pocahontas. She got the angles pretty quickly, though. That's pretty skillful. That's that, like, dude, she crushed those angles. Skillful. Skillful. Uh, that was, you might not like her, but she had some strong spatial awareness of where the camera was and how to avoid it. New U.S. Senator Cynthia Loomis says Bitcoin mining is good for America's energy grids and the development of new slash stranded energy resources. Bitcoin miners, we'd love to have you in Wyoming. There is a decent argument that it actually brings stability to the electricity grid. Uh, there's a lot of third world uh, countries that have like poor electricity grids and Bitcoin mining has actually helped them. Justin Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway closes in on $1 trillion market value after a robust Q4 earnings. Okadokes, if you say so. <laughs> That's how my trading feels currently today. Uh, I'm the second guy. I'm the second guy. All right. We're catching a bit of a bid and a little bit of a breakout. A bit of a bid and a bit of a breakout. A bit of a bid, bit of a breakout, bit of a bid. The Qs are actually bringing enough strength. It's just XLF that's holding us back. Someone, hey, can any of the billionaires watching this stream just start buying up banks, please? Because it's kind of ruling the, ruining the party for the rest of us, if I'm being completely honest. 
a little bit of a a little bit of a drag on the party that XLF is dipping so hard. It, and it's just not stopping, man. Look at that. From 10 till now, just getting hit. Uh, options market tried to pick up, especially the um, further out from the zero DT. Big bullishness right there. And even the zero DT starting to pick up on the SPY. So maybe this leads to a little bit of a, a turnaround, but... Obviously, it could just horrifically dip as well. So what happened there? Uh, puts got close. Okay, so that actually wasn't aggressive bullishness. It was just the lack of bearishness. So that jump we just saw, it was not aggressive call buying. It was actually someone getting out of a put position. Definitely important to note that it was dramatic, but we're not seeing, I guess, the way it play out in price action the way you thought it would because it was a put being closed. It was not a call being bought. Uh, in terms of that delta, the delta change. But calls have been drifting up, puts kind of flat, obviously a spike right there. But overall, not not the most trendy picture. If anything, we're just kind of burning sideways right now. So patience, patience, patience. Either if the queues keep going, we'll be good. But if the queues go the way of the financials, uh, they're going to take a hit. Or if the financials go the way of the queues, well, then we're going to pop out. So we need to wait for the disparity between the NASDAQ and the financial sector, the XLK and XLF. That difference in movement, we, we need to wait for something. Need to wait for something. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, click the follow button if you're new here. Oh, wow. We have a lot of people watching on Rum today. Shout out, Rum people. Um, if you want the quick breakdown on what in the world happened with Nikki Haley and how she was completely embarrassed, that was at the start of this stream. Um, we also had a couple of reacts in there, some fun stuff. And then at 930, you're going to find some super, super degenerate market opening trade that I was able to bag about 15,000. So that was exciting. And now we're just trying to figure out kind of the, the final trade for the day, trying to wait for this opening range to either break to the upside, downside, trying to let the market gods tell us which way things are going. Um, and obviously shout out to the others watching as well. Let me switch out the pin chat. There we go. All right, I'm pinning this. Remember the Discord, the prices are going up this Friday. So if you want to get in, if you want to be grandfathered into the cheaper fee, uh, you should sign up now and just make sure the code Goonies applied. If you click on the link, it should take you to this page. Make sure the code Goonies applied. Make sure you're on monthly. And that's how you get your first free month. Um, this Friday, it's going from $30 a month to $50 a month. Uh, the first month's free. So you can just test it out. See if you like it. If you like it, stick around. You're grandfathered in at a cheaper cost. And then if you don't like it, you can leave and it didn't cost you anything. So no harm, no foul. Uh, so pinned to the top of chat. There's If you're watching this and if you enjoy trading, uh, training competitions, private lectures on the weekend, newsletters, my trades, other members' trades, some signals, all that good stuff, that's the place for you. Literally, you don't have to spend a dime for it. And I truly, truly, truly believe within that first free month that you'll pay for the next month, the whole next year, potentially even more than that. Um, but thus far the reception not only in terms of how it's like the community that's being formed there but literally just the pure profits that people are generating from the knowledge shared in the lecture videos is spy oh okay we had a bit of a weird lag there uh spy just hit a new intraday low but we're on a weird Weird potential breakdown alert, I guess, is one I want to call out for the spy. But the cues are holding on a bit better. Um, I don't like these days. That's a mismatch day. We definitely have a mismatch day. Uh, obviously, things could turn around if the spy gets above and closes above this trend line. I'll be looking at these EMAs, but the five minute breaking down and the 10 minutes at its test point. So, uh, not the most trendy Monday we've ever seen. I mean, the spy is technically green right now, but it's really break even. The cues are technically green, but once again, like it's not that far away. It's 81 cents. The spy is literally at its closing value. So, patience. Uh, when you sync the discord, so people who signed up yesterday get lit in, um, it should have synced overnight. I could run it manually right after this for you, Zach. Uh, but one of the, the major issues I see is, 
uh, people not accepting the verification email. So for any of you signing up for Locals, which is the payment processor and the member management for the Discord, so you have to go through Locals. They do all that management for me. Um, to sync it, just make sure you are accepting the verification email after you do the syncing, and the email will be, com will be coming from an account called Discord Sync. Um, so look for that in your email inbox. Definitely make sure you're doing that. And then uh, the other most common issue I see is when people do the syncing, they're actually logged into the incorrect Discord account. So maybe that's a potential issue. Um, what if you don't get an email? It means you didn't sync it properly. You might have had a typo in your email or something like that. But for any of that, like, obviously, I'm giving you general answers right now. But sometimes freaky things happen. If you're having an issue, reach out to me. I will personally help you. Uh, DM me on Discord is probably the easiest. Or you could email me at media at matthewcores.com. But if you sign up, it's based on your sign up date. So don't freak out of like, oh, I have to have it fully functioning. It's just based on your sign up date. Just apply the code and it there and I will help you get it resolved today. So you could email me media at matthewcores.com or you could DM me on Discord. You could DM me on Twitter and I will get like, I'll literally respond to you today and we'll get it figured out. No worries. Um, if you guys want, I mean, I could run an update of it right now or here. I, I'll run an update of the database. I'll manually process it. I'll do it in five minutes five minutes so for anyone who wants to sign up right now and be in the discord really really fast um you have four minutes and 56 seconds to sign up pin to the top of chat in the description and i'll just manually click off like kick off the database update so you can get access like very very soon um so i will run it all right after that uh btc heading to 53k Bitcoin's popping when financials are getting smacked. I mean, Bitcoin's been moving since nine this morning, like really, really moving. Um, and we're also seeing that somewhat in coin that is now up 11%. Coin is ripping today. Uh, Tesla had a good push almost to 200. It got to 199.86, smacked at the psychological level. NVIDIA rums up. Rum tag seven in pre-market. Microsoft a little red, Meta a little red. NVIDIA was above 800 this morning. I mean, we have a, a couple of things are moving and grooving, not everything, um, but a little bit of bullishness. I think there's a little bit of something for everyone to play today. There's some bullishness, there's some bearishness. So deciding, depending on what camp you find yourself in, there's probably some, some action for you, something reasonable all right you guys did send in some react so let's check that out let's check that out do 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 reacts 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 where are the reacts oh sorry i was blind i was blind Would you ever move out of America for affordable living? Good question. I live and work in Spain, making roughly a thousand euros a month, which in America is nothing, but in Spain is more than enough to live. I only work 16 hours a week, and I'm able to afford a super nice apartment in the city center of Madrid. Food costs me 20 euros a week. My electric bill is like 30 euros a month. I don't have to worry about gas or a car payment or insurance because the public transportation system is so world class that you don't even need a car at all. Madrid is like is the this New true? York of Spain. Do we have so anyone in, in Spain or has been in York, Spain recently? You have to be making literally at least five grand a month, and that's extremely lowballing it. Just their way of life in general, like, is so much more relaxed and just taking time to enjoy life rather than just working constantly they literally have a siesta in the middle of the day where they take three hours oh, to oh sign me up for that one a coffee shop to hang out with friends like the american mind cannot fathom it's just crazy to me because like you've been told growing up your whole life that america is the best country in the world that's just <laughs> so far from the truth and it's like very obvious how much worse it is now that I've gotten out. Do we have anyone that's done like the whole, I was American, I lived in America, and now like you checked out a European country? 
No, isn't Spain in a bad economic environment for the past year? No. Uh, I don't know. I'm asking you guys. I'm asking you guys. But yeah, I bet they don't have Texas Roadhouse. That's probably a problem for them. That's probably a part of problem for them. I just filled it up at $250 a bet. The whole screen is filled. The major is 30, the grand is 136 at Rivers. All right, baby, let's go. Is he going to hit it on his first try? Come on, grand, 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 grand. Is he going to hit? Grant, grant, grant. $50,000. Yes. What? I just won fifty thousand. Yeah. I thought I was gonna hit the grand. Yeah. Did you really? What? Yeah. Why is he so oh. calm? Two hundred fifty dollars. I'd be jumping with joy. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I thought I was gonna be the grand. Fuck. I really thought the grand was gonna hit. Why is he not more excited? Wow, I'm surprised the major didn't hit. That's nuts. This guy is so pessimistic All about right, it. What a good way to start my Monday morning. Yeah. Monday morning. What are you doing there, brother? What are you doing there, brother? All right. Timer is about to stop. All right. So if you just signed up, I will kick off the database update right now. It'll take a couple minutes. Let me get rocking with this. Let me get rocking. Let me get. All right. Export the data. Exporting, exporting, exporting. Let's do this. Le presento a Charo Leonela. Miren esta preciosura, hermosa, bella. Muchachos, ella es She's la que me mantiene. Winner. Por eso yo no trabajo. Porque el gobierno le da lo que le pertenece a mi hija por ser ciudadana americana. Capichi. No tengo Capici. necesidad de, de trabajar porque, bueno, muchachos, como pocos, esta princesita ya... Por ser americana, ya recibe mucho dinero. Capichi. Y bueno, como pocos muchachos, mírenla. Aquí ustedes pueden ver el arte hecha realidad. Y bueno, muchachos, muchos querían saber de dónde yo pago el dinero, dónde saco yo el dinero. Wow. Muchachos, la vuelta es tener hijos en Estados Unidos. ¿Sí o no, coming. mi amor? ¿Sí o no, mi amor? Charo. Charo, mira, dile a estos seguidores. Feel bad for the kid, no, honestly. Yo, que me dé un besito, pero. Yeah, I legit just feel bad for the kid. Dígale, dígale, papá, muchacho, aquí está la mina de oro. La mina de oro. Charo, ¿quién es la mina de oro? Ahí está. Yo, diga. Yo. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, that's frustrating. What's that one? What do we have here? Zoomers are asking, why is America sending so much money to Ukraine? Why are we sending so much money to Ukraine? When there's literally starving children on our streets, homeless people all over the place, I can't afford rent. I, I still owe on my taxes this year. And yet, we're sending more money? Hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine? Like... Okay, Mr. Biden, what? Why? I remember my first time realizing what the U.S. government does and how scummy it is for the rest of us. I remember my first beer. I thought we would have a quiet day at the zoo. <laughs> Dude, imagine if the glass broke right there, how dead this person would be if somehow the security related to this enclosure did not hold. This person would be in so many different pieces. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, hang on, let me go back to this for all of you. All right, I am updating. Hang on, let me start this. I'm getting the full list of everyone downloads. All right, good, 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 good. File uploaded. Great. All I have to do is 
now kick off the job. All right, the job is kicked off. It'll take a couple of minutes, but if you guys just all signed up, you should be ready to rock in a mere couple of minutes. And if you were a little late missing it, don't worry. Uh, generally, my habit is right after stream, I update it anyway. So if you just miss it, and you're like, dude, what's going on? Like, it's all right. I'll, I'll manually run the job a couple of times today. Um, so if you missed out, you didn't actually miss out. Um, but it looks like a chunk of you got in. Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. I will let you know when the job is done running, um, but make sure you go through the verification process. So like it's there, it'll be like a giant button that says like sync your accounts right here. Click it, put in the right email, send the email, go to your email, accept the verification. And then after you do that and the database updates, you're gonna have full access. And if you have any issues, DM me on Discord, DM me on Twitter, DM me on Instagram email me media at matthewcores.com get a hold of me i will personally help you through it and make sure that you have the access that you rightfully deserve all right uh hang on did i miss oh there were a lot more reacts my apologies my apologies my apologies my apologies what else did you guys send in the story of Mintani, his 26-year-old pet tortoise, and their walk around Tokyo neighborhoods. No way. In Skishima, Japan, there's a man named Mr. Mitani who likes to take his giant African tortoise out for walks. I his want His name one. is Bonchan, and he's 25 years old. Mr. Mitani's he's wife young. bought him when he was smaller than the size of the palm of his hand. They expected him to get big, but not this big. And he started to grow rapidly as soon as he hit 10 years old. Now he weighs 70 kilograms, which is about 155 pounds. What? Mr. Mitani takes him on long walks down Monjojori, which is a famous shopping street from Monjoyaki. And when I say long walks, I mean like these five minute walks that usually take about an hour because of his slow pace and because of all the people that want to take pictures with him. Mr. Mitani takes him out on these walks so that way he doesn't feel stressed out being cooped up at home. If you're ever in Skishima from 3 to 5 p.m. on a very nice day, you'll definitely see Bonchan taking a walk. Aww. Maybe even longer because he might refuse to go home. In Skishima. I want one. Hey, I want one. I want to walk a tortoise. Bro bragging about a $750 zip tie. It's so over. Got your rent on my wrist. Dude. Who's selling zip ties for $750, $750, $847, It's sold out? What is wrong with this world? They don't deserve to have this money. If you are dumb enough to buy this stuff, you, you don't deserve to have the money that you have. Like it, it should go to the person who is smart enough to sell you that zip tie for so much money. Oh dear. Why are you looking at them girls like that? They look good. That's why I'm looking at it like that. But dad, they're not even your age. They look like I give a fuck. Do it look like I give a fuck? I don't. Age ain't number a number. You'll learn that when you get older. Plus, I'm just looking. That's a side to point, R. Kelly. You looking at the little girls like that, and you're going to be looking at me through a glass window when you in jail. Shut the hell up, Sean. You don't know what you're talking about. Plus, I'm looking at her right there, and I know little girls. Miss Penny? That should weigh like 400 pounds. Plus, she in a wheelchair. I'm not talking about Miss Penny. Her right there. Oh, Miss Johnson. That's right. I heard she used to be a man. Shut the hell up, Sean. She ain't used to be no man. What are you talking about? She's just a tall tree, and I want to cut it down. That's what I want to do. Yeah, before you cut it down, make sure you cut that branch off. Get the hell out of here! You shut the hell up! That was a good one. Gramps standing on business. He waited half a century for this moment. Gramps knows Speak what's up. Truth. Don't get mad because he's spitting facts. Don't get mad at Gramps for spitting facts. Uh, I never forget when Shaq lost a bet to D Wade and had to grow out his hairline. <laughs> Let's just get it out of the way, America. I had a bet against one of my good friends, D Wade, Milwaukee versus the Heat. I said Milwaukee was going to win by 20 and the Heat won. And I said, well, what do you want me to do, pay you? He said, nah, 
you got to let your hairline grow out. We want to see your hairline looking like Kenny Smith. Oh, my so God. I just, so I just lined it up for y'all so y'all can see where my hairline well, starts. Good. Let's just get it out the way. That's pretty funny. Hey, a man of his word. Uh, what the hell is he trying to do? I think we saw one like this. It was a different shoe, though. But basically, I think we're about to see a super racist tortoise. I want to know how someone even figured this out. Like what happened that they were even in an environment where they could test this? Like there was some deep scientific testing, a scientific methodology here of hypothesis, change one variable, measure the results. He has different shoes. He brought all the tape. Like there was a lot of time. This is just a, just, just look at all the different testing they did. A little bit of object permanence in here. I think this one guy just must have found somehow the most racist turtle ever. What, what's going on here? And I also want to know how much time he spent into showcasing this about the turtle uh too many words don't feel like reading it this is what i'm struggling with in america right now in my 20s okay why is everything so expensive why everyone's am I struggling with that waitressing that i would make using my college degree i barely have a life i have two days off and i work wednesday to sunday doubling just to pay my bills at 22 years old all of my bills are in my name i have no help how are y'all affording housing and Myrtle Beach, a one-bedroom apartment, is fifteen hundred dollars. Bullshit! Bullshit! Dude, How are y'all getting insurance? For going to the doctor, and getting medicine, and then some of us are trying to be TikTok influencers. Who knows where that's gonna get me? Me and my boyfriend are saving, but we barely see each other during the week, and it feels like we're working our asses off for nothing. Do we need to move somewhere for a better job opportunity that we don't know about? Do any of y'all really know what you want to do with your life right now? It is so scary being in America right now. If you can relate to this, if you have any advice, please comment and let me know. It's ridiculous. This is what I'm sure. Yeah, get a better job. This whole concept of I have a college degree, I deserve money. No, a lot of college degrees are worthless. Get a good degree that society values and you will be paid. And I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Inflation is bad. Regardless of the job you have, Prices are going up. You're going to feel that. But I hate this cop out of, I have a college degree. Why am I not making money? Because a lot of college degrees, a lot of master degrees, a lot of PhDs are not valued by society because you're not doing anything that society cares about. And that's like one of the biggest lies I feel that the college system is pitching to everyone is you come here, your life will be set up. That is not true. If you think by inherently just going to college, your life is great. No. A lot of the degrees are absolutely useless and you'd be far better off not going to college, starting your own business, Votech, something like that. Yes, there are great college degrees, especially within like the STEM field, but you can't just assume because you have a college degree that like you're going to be playing life on easy mode. That's just not how it works at all. That's not how it works at all. Um, Spy tried to break out. Uh, I'm looking at the S&P 500 directly right here. SPX tried to break out, got smacked, and now we're at the bottom edge of its wedge. So we'll see if we just right bounce right off of that. This might just be a choppy consolidation day. Um, you kind of have the cues keeping the market alive while you have the SPY kind of going down a little bit. But uh, clear, clear mismatch on the day. Clear, clear mismatch. Tesla's looking good. Coin's looking good. Bitcoin itself is looking good. Uh, maybe a little fake out liquidity grab here on the SPY watching this trend line what else are we missing breaking pelosi is back we got some breaking nancy pelosi trading news pelosi is back 
Nancy Pelosi just to close her purchase of over $1 million in call options on PANW from earlier this month. She bought the $200 strike expiring in January of 2025. Let's see how it's thus far playing out for her. What date was it? What was the date of execution? 212. And then again, so she purchased puts $50 call, 50 call options, 20 call options. So 50 and 20, she has 70 strike price of 200. And she did this on the 12th and on the 21st. So she did it here. Oops. She did it here and here. So most of them were right here. Uh, so as of now, a rare L for Pelosi. Uh, but then the second purchase was right here. And obviously those are up pretty nicely, but this was the grouping of 20. Uh, where was it right here? She had 20 of these while the first chunk was 50. So she's at this point underwater, but if this thing ends up ripping throughout the year, which I guess she's going for the upside gap fill at 360. Um, I mean, if it gets back to 360, 370, 380, she'll definitely be in the green. It's just, um, I'd. I'm not surprised she didn't go heavier here with this one being the lighter position. She kind of flip-flopped it, but we'll see how it goes. This might be your official buy alert on Pan W. I have no idea. I know it got rocked after its earnings, but it's making a pretty decent recovery back to the upside. Um, the the reason things are looking good, except the SPY is not going that way, is because of the financial sector. Right here, the financial sector is just not having a good day. Maybe catching a bit of a bid right now. Maybe 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 a capital m a y b e uh tlt bonds maybe catching a bit it's just you gotta see this stuff turn around let's check in on the options market to see what's going on there options have been dipping pretty heavily ever since 10 37 dip 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 big dip vomit bounce back let's see if this can hold if this low can hold and we start to spin them off of it that might be good but obviously if we take out these lows that's pretty freaking bearish and it is not being led by tech today if anything tech's looking strong tech's going for a new intraday high it is the spy that is just it wicked 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 at its close from last week technically friday push below it bit of a liquidity grab popping back up once again i'm watching this trend line intraday and then on the longer time frame if you go to the s p 500 I'm kind of watching this trend line where it's coming up to the end of this triangle, this wedge pretty soon. So I am astutely watching that. But right now, a lot of mismatches. The five minute on the S&P 500, technically the futures market is now bearish. The 10 minute potentially breaking down. The 30 minute barely holding on. On the flip side though, you have tech that is bullish, 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 bullish on like bullish times four while we have bearish, potentially breaking down just saved itself and then one of these is bullish so bearish bullish in adjacent corners and then suspect in the other adjacent corners so um these days where we don't have that nice agreement across the major markets it, it, they tend to just be crappy days they tend to be pretty pretty crappy days but we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes pelosi trades on robin hood that would be hilarious i mean this political, it's the biggest bullshit ever. Like the fact that they can still trade. Uh, Palo Alto network stock jumps over 8% as Nancy Pelosi discloses buying calls. Yeah, she's not manipulating the market at all. That's not manipulation. That's totally not manipulation. It gets awkward when the crowd doesn't go full Trump derangement. You can't look at anything that, that Donald Trump has done in the first 31 days and said, I may disagree, but it's really well thought out and really reasoned. <laughs> You're laughing. That's how sad it is. You know, it, sh it should be, well, there was that one thing. There is not that one thing. You know, it's scary. And so... Um, Pretty poor comedic timing. We want him to be successful. I actually like some of the candidates. You can't look at anything that... that that was just awkward. Little bit awkward. All right, are we missing anything? I'm not seeing breaking news there. Uh, Hungary votes to approve Sweden's NATO membership. 
Okay, I guess Hungary making the first move there. I didn't even know that Sweden wasn't a part of NATO. Shows how much I know about global political situations. Billionaire GOP donors pivot to Congress after Haley's run fades. Risk models behind world's best hedge fund strategy are getting a lot harder to crack. AI is exploding. Data center energy use. A Google-created technique may help. Jack Ma backed Ant outbid Citadel Securities for Credit Suisse's China JV. City hires JP Morgan's something as head of banking. Rag Raghavan. Raghavan. I just... I hate to say him because I know I'm going to butcher the name and it feels disrespectful. Uh, spy, new intraday low, but yet the queue's holding up. Riddle me that. Riddle me that. Oh, options. Like I said, watch out for, out, for it to take out its low and it did. Options delta. Hmm. I don't know. One of these is going to give way. Either either the bears on the spire are going to give way or the bulls on the cues are going to give way. And I think the answer is going to be a little bit more related to, as you can tell, this guy. XLF, not looking the best. XLE, coming down, but not the worst. XLU, not looking good. XLI, not looking good. XLV, wow. The healthcare sector is getting murked this morning. So XLF getting murked, XLV getting murked. The financial and the healthcare sector, respectively. XLI, XLK. I mean, this is tech, which you can basically see with the Qs, which is holding. Uh, wow. Uh, maybe my indication on, oh, okay, like is it time to be bullish on the SPY is probably if XLF bounces or if bonds start to bounce a little bit harder. Uh, healthcare, it's influential, not the most influential. If you want to see a heat map of the situation, here's the heat map. You could go on Finviz. Uh, you have right here, utilities are weak right here, but it's a smaller sector. Uh, you have healthcare that's weak, eh, could be decently sized. You have financials right here. I thought Burke was up. Burke is now down by 1%. Google's taking a hit today. Nvidia is green. So we had, it's kind of Christmassy, little red, little green, and that we're getting a weird net situation where the spy is kind of drifting down because a lot of these small to medium sectors are drifting down. But then yet the big tech sector actually had a nice pump, uh, kind of going sideways. So if it goes sideways while the other ones are bleeding off, of course the spy continues to bleed. Remember, the spy is going to be the amalgamation of pretty much all these other ones. That's literally what these are. XLF is the financial place within the S&P 500. That's what the XLs are. XLF, XLE, XLU, XLV, I, K. All those are the different subsets of the overall S&P 500 to try to figure out where the weak and the strong points are. Honestly, I don't even know if I want this alert set up anymore because it just keeps slowly dinging. It's becoming a nuisance. We'll set it up up here. Set it up up here. Golly. Yeah, this well now if the Q start to go, the spy is definitely gonna take a hit. The only thing that was really saving it was this nice pump in the Qs. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Awkward. Well, I guess before we dip, why would Amazon join the Dow? Because it was more, what company did it kick out? Basically, it's just more influential than. Did I enter on Ulta? No, I've never played Ulta in my life. Never played Ulta in my life. How's it looking? No, I wouldn't buy this now. When something rips like that, that's not the telltale sign to get in. You want to be in on the initial breakout, like back here around like 480. To chase this now, that's just poor risk reward. Uh, and it's looking good. Like I'm not against the bull camp on it by any means. It's just more of like your risk. Like what are you going to risk and what's the potential reward? The Like you don't buy at a recent high after a massive rip. That's just poor capital management. Um, so if you're in it, 
obviously all the power to you. I hope it breaks out, but no way would I be buying it up here. Like I said, just poor risk management. Poor risk management, if you ask me. Will S-O-U-N keep pumping? Literally no one on this planet knows it uh, at all. all. All you should be asking yourself, is it currently at a good risk or reward setup? Not will it keep going? Because no one knows. It's, you're inherently seeking an answer that is not answerable because there's there's just too many variables to consider. It's basically in the short term, especially it's going to be closer to randomness than anything else. So the only thing you can consider is what's your risk? What's your reward? Do you like that setup? And if you don't like the risk reward setup, you don't take the trade. Um, it, this idea of just exclusively saying, Hey, like I, I'm feeling bullish on it. Like this gut feeling thing is bullshit. It really, really is. Thanks for being so responsive of email stream and manually dropping the Discord. I'm now in. Much appreciated. Okay, so it looks like it did fully update. So if you just signed up and applied the code properly and became a supporter on Locals, um, you should be good to go. Once again, if you have issues, reach out to me, media at matthewcores.com, uh, or just DM me on Discord, DM me on Twitter, and I will get to you guys. Um, but actually, I didn't even realize what time it is. That is it for today. Now, before I let you guys go, um, obviously a special shout out to public. If you haven't already, it is the first link in the description of the video. It's going to look a little something like this. Public is the trading brokerage where I think it's the best place to trade options, in my humble opinion, because it's the only one that gives you a cut of the rebate. Check it out, public.com slash Matt The link is in the description of the video. And they just rolled out with options trading. It's literally just now a month old. Um, so they're continually, literally day over day, week over week, they're adding stuff to it. But the key thing is here on this options brokerage, you get something no other bro options brokerage in the entire world has. You're getting a kickback of the rebate that you generate from trading. So no matter how good or not good of an options trader you are, I think there's a pretty logical argument that you would be better off trading with them because at least you're getting some of this rebate. Uh, it's free to download. It's free to sign up. Check it out. Check it out. It's no harm, no foul type of a situation. So on top of that, also, if you want to join the Discord, the prices are going up this Friday. So if you want to get grandfathered into a better price, you should probably sign up today. That's what I have for you. Don't forget, I will be on Yahoo's... Um, public live stream. I'm going to be on Yahoo Finance at 1 p.m. today. I'm going to be talking about crypto. So if you want to see your boy with a suit on, um, you can see me there. I think I'm going to be rocking the blue suit today. Blue, blue suit Monday type of a vibe. So that's at 1 p.m. ET today. I appreciate all the good vibes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you're having a great Monday. I hope you make a buttload of money. I'll be catching you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. bright and early. And between now and then, I'll be doing the live stream. We'll post some other content. And I'll see you at Texas Roadhouse. That's what I have for you. Peace out.